Chapter 14 It was a bright and sunny day in the Leaf Village that greeted Team 7 that morning. While Sakura and Naruto were both poking a lethargic Sasuke and trying to get him to react, Kakashi had deigned this morning a good one to show up on time. Yo! Sakura turned to their teacher, you're not late. Good morning sensei. While it had started off as a yell the girl evened out her voice when she realized it was still early. Kakashi nodded, well it'll still be a few days before regular missions so I figured we could work on team training and the like. While each of his students were learning about their affinities, team training would always be vital. Naruto however turned and coughed to gain everyone's attention. Actually, if everyone doesn't mind. Seeing everyone turn to him he sighed, I do have something important to bring up. Sasuke finally seemed to focus a little, maybe staying up training wasn't the best of ideas. He wasn't Naruto after all. Well what's up? Finally figure out some new even crazier way to blow things up? That was what their friend usually had to bring them. Naruto shook his head, I mean always, but this is a little more important. Sasuke, you asked me why your brother would be after me duh, I know why. Before either of his other two students could say anything, Kakashi held up a hand, Naruto, this is your choice, but are you sure? Naruto nodded, they're my team. If I can trust them with my life I should be able to trust them with this. Taking a deep breath and exhaling the boy continued, what do you remember about the QB? Sakura piped up first after a moment of thought, well its attack against the leaf was a disaster. Only stopped by the fourth Hokage himself who defeated it. Naruto shook his head, the QB is an ancient demon that literally can't be defeated. Trying to kill it just means it'll reform later, even more angry. No, the fourth couldn't beat it, so he had to seal it away. Sasuke however caught on, you've got a demon sealed in your guts? Seeing his friend slowly nod the Echiha shrugged, maybe that explains why you're such a glutton. Hey! Enoheim said the same thing. It's true. If you didn't train so much, you'd end up like Choji. You ass. Baka. Whistling to stop her idiot friends from starting a fist fight, the lone girl of the team asked her own question, so you're the seal holding back a mountain-sized demon. Got any perks out of the deal at least? Naruto pointed at his eye, extreme healing and if I happen to be in a pinch I can borrow its chakra. Though the chakra can send me into a rage if I pull too much of it. Huh, so definitely a big pinch scenario. Well, that's fine. If the big beast has no chance of getting out then that's good for me. Sakura however marched forward and clasped the boy by his cheeks, though I do feel a certain way about you hiding this for so long. Fighting through his cheeks getting crushed, Naruto waved his hands in defense, but I wasn't sure if you guys would flip. And then I learned some more stuff and then all the drama with finding Tsunade and then Inohime and Hinata-chan helped me out and dash wait a minute, they knew before us? Sakura dropped the boy on his ass. You h dot b y like a day? He was met with a scream of feminine rage. We're your team, Baka. We should have known first. Sasuke leaned from behind the irate girl, I think she's just mad Ino knew before her. He never saw the fist coming. Happy that his team seemed to be okay with things, there was one last bombshell to lay on them. Leaning back on his hands and enjoying the moment Naruto smiled, well, there's a little more. I found out about my parents too. Pausing in her rant, Sakura turned back, how? You're an orphan, how'd you get any info at all? Hinata-chan actually helped some. She got the idea to look into the Uzumaki clan on her own and had been putting together a scroll with information for me. Waving a finger in the air, the boy continued as his friends watched on, plus Pervy Sage is apparently my godfather and told me while we were gone. That he had to be beaten first went unsaid, or that the snake bastard had spilled the beans. He'd get his one day. Sasuke was pulling himself up into a seated position from where Sakura had laid him out. Well don't leave us hanging, who were they? Idly Sakura sat down next to them, to complete the little circle. Kakashi standing, not far away, and watching over them. Naruto pointed to the red swirl on his jacket, my mom was Kushina Uzumaki, general badass, and container of the QB before me. My dad though, well uh. Hey, you ever notice how there aren't many blondes in the leaf village? Sakura sighed, what, are you a relative of the Yamanaka? Pretty sure that'll disappoint Ino. Their rivalry might be more friendly now, but she couldn't help to get a jab in from time to time. Naruto however shook his head in the negative. Sasuke thought about it, Tsunade-sama is a blonde, you related to her? Pinning that thought for later, 
because it was a possibility, Naruto shook his head, nah. My dad was the fourth himself. Seeing his teammates blink at him, but say nothing, the Uzumaki leaned forward and crossed his arms, what? Sakura pointed at the mountain, the legendary Hokage himself, the yellow flash, the hero of the third shinobi war, that's your dad? Sasuke picked up on her thought, the very ninja hailed as a once-in-a-generation genius that had no equal. So talented even the rakage acknowledged him in terms of speed? That's your dad? Both of his teammates looked between each other, and then Naruto. Before both burst out laughing. Come on Naruto, you could at least make it believable. Sakura didn't mean to laugh at their friend, but he hadn't tried to prank them in so long. Maybe he was getting rusty. Kakashi chimed in with a smile, actually. His father trained me. He was really excited for little Naruto to be born, even told me I should get ready for diaper duty. Seeing all three of his students looking up to him, one questioning and the other two in disbelief, he continued, along with the law the Sandane passed, I was under severe orders not to inform you about your parents even slightly. Under penalty of death. Sakura and Sasuke slowly turned back to a grinning Naruto. Sakura however scoffed, okay fine, so basically you and Sasuke are pretty much village royalty. She paused while she considered that before shrugging, I'm never calling you young lord. Sasuke nodded, guess that means you'll be sitting in on council meetings with me soon. Oh the excitement. Naruto shrugged, doubt it. Though I do need to get some answers about things from the council. Kakashi clapped, don't hold your breath on that one, but I'll help out if I can. For now with the revelations out of the way, let's get to training. Happy that his team was able to come together so seamlessly, the jonin considered putting in a little extra effort today. Naruto himself was happy that his team still accepted him without fail. They both were like siblings to him and it would have been terrible if they had reacted badly. Armed with that new knowledge and now knowing his sensei hadn't lied to him without reason the last stop was the council. Their morning training came and went, Kakashi, calling it early as the three students were left on their own. As Sasuke and Sakura turned to Naruto, the blonde tilted his head, what? Sakura grinned, well we did say we'd hang out and get ramen, so let's go. Next to her Sasuke had his hands in his pockets, but a small smile on his face. It wasn't long however as they made their way back into the village proper, that they were brought up short. All three were interrupted as a girl on horseback passed them by. Three armed and armored men chasing after her gave all of them further pause. That wasn't normal. Bandits in Kanoha? Still a girl in trouble, clone spam and then smash and grab? Both Sakura and Sasuke were already moving with him, smash and grab. None knew the adventure they were about to embark on, while another meeting was currently taking place. Scene change Tsunade was already in sour mood as she dismissed Kakashi to go find the wayward princess and his students. Mission assigned and a word to Shizun to lock the door, she turned her eyes to the only other occupant to the room now. Well you're still here for a reason, wanna speak up before I throw you out. Danzo admitted that he was a severe man. Scarred from war and still bandaged to give the illusion as such, he still fully believed everything he did was for the good of the village. Sarutobi and he did not always see eye to eye, but in the end they did agree on some things. Enough that Danzo had in the end respected the man even if he had gotten soft in his waning years. He had hope, however, that he could impress certain necessities on the returned Senju. I appreciate your candor in this. Tsunade scoffed while returning to her paperwork, while well, you were the one so very insistent that Team 7 and Kakashi take this mission to the Land of Snow. I'm sure you have a very good reason for such that you'll explain to me, now. After hearing about some of what Sarutobi had gone through and done, the Sanin was not in the mood to let any of the council have their way. Danzo walked to the front of the desk, tapping his cane along, simply put, I believed it would be best to give the young Uzumaki time outside of the village with his team. Bonding with allies was a tenet that the previous Hokage praised after all. But not you. So what's this about, really? Danzo however smiled in a way that Tsunade noticed did not come close to reaching his visible eye, word is young Naruto has shared his secret with his teammates. And considering his newest bingo book rating, I believe making sure he has strong connections to the village is a priority. He is a steadily improving asset to the village. One we can not allow to fall into enemy hands. This Akatsuki business also gives pause and worry. That the group may seek to give the Uzumaki a better alternative never left his mind. Far too late to induct him into the root program, but never too late to sink other hooks into the boy. Tsunade fully paused now from her work. You have a lot of focus on one genin, Danzo. 
No doubt from her how abnormal this was, and also none concerning what kind of motivation Danzo had. Danzo finally sat, laying his cane over his lap. Frankly speaking, I believe you have the wrong idea about me at the moment. Then enlighten me. Cause the urge to punch you through the wall is rising. Chuckling, the aged ninja wouldn't question the senju's temper. I'm sure Saratobi has notes detailing my, deeds, as it were. However my one and only goal is to strengthen the leaf village. And while yes, I had advocated heavily for the young Uzumaki's training to be separate from his peers, I see now I was wrong in that. He has grown leaps and bounds above what even I thought possible. I want that to continue. Already we're receiving more missions and requests for aid just from his showing in the sand village surrendered not long ago after they revealed they were tricked by Orochimaru and no longer had the manpower to oppose us. That too is due to the boy. Tsunade sat back in her chair and thought for a moment as Danzo trailed off and they were left to silence. Tenting her fingers in front of her face as she frowned slightly, she still wasn't seeing something, and yet, you and the council have done everything you can to take everything from him. Danzo shook his head, a mistake by my greedier peers, not my decision at all you'll find. In fact, I was staunchly against the liquidation of the Uzumaki holdings. Yet it was an action that improved the village as a whole. Yuzushio barriers lined the walls and gates. Throughout the forests, chakra sensor seals and emergency fortified bunkers again all reinforced with seals and technology from the Uzumaki. Tsunade placed her hands flat on the table, can you say you aren't happy about that? Of course I am. As I said, whatever is good for the village will appease me just fine. However, please remember who was Hokage when those orders were given. Here it was, to reveal something that actually didn't have to do with him. A truth, if only half. Tsunade raised an eyebrow, you're passing the buck, to Sarutobi? As if he solely ordered the Uzumaki clan's holdings and records be taken? Seeing the even look on the older man's face, Tsunade began to pale, he really did, didn't he? Danzo nodded, we were a pair. Much as the first and second Hokages were. He was to be the gentle and compassionate leader while I was the shadow, the iron hand in the silk glove as it were. Danzo raised his own hand and made a fist, knuckles popping loudly in the silent room, however he was not Hokage just for do you think he visited and spent so much time with the boy? Made sure he was isolated as he was, but always made time to give him a word or a shoulder to lean on? That was not my way of doing things. Yeah, from what I heard, you're the tear them down and break them type. Ignoring the man nodding and shrugging with admission, she still couldn't see the lie in what he was saying. Had the previous Hokage really looked that far ahead? Endearing Naruto to him in such a way as to what? Build loyalty to him and therefore the village? Was Naruto's dream of being Hokage just something Sarutobi built up in the boy's mind in order to further protect the village in the future? That's a large accusation to make. Especially with no concrete proof. Perhaps, but maybe a few months of working with me will show you the truth of things. I truly only want to see the leaf grow strong. Naruto is helping that cause, and I have no reason to hinder him. Him or his curious little love interests. A subtle admission that could be perceived many ways, Danzo of course wasn't above petty. Tsunade however didn't take kindly to threats against the children, but of course, could do nothing at the moment. Back to my original question, sending them to snow is purely a team bonding move? I don't fully buy it. Tsunade thought about snow's location to the north, before frowning again, especially since it is almost exactly in the opposite direction of where Yuzushio would be. Danzo was already standing, purely coincidental. I have no interest in that husk of a village. I want you to trust me, Hokage-sama, eventually. I really have only the best interests of everyone on my mind. Then one last question. As the man paused in turning away, the blonde woman brought up another point, during the war Kanoha was apparently distracted by someone and allowed Yuzushio to be destroyed. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Danzo only smiled, it is telling that our greatest ally, one who had been with the Leaf since the beginning, since our very founding, was suddenly without aid. This would have made us look weak in the eyes of what allies we had made up till then and would not have been a decision I would have made. Tapping his can again on the floor Danzo sighed heavily, alas, I was not chosen as the Hokage, and thus could not direct troops to what obviously seemed like an easy target. Saying his piece and seeing Tsunade had nothing else to say to him the man bowed deeply and then was out the door. Tsunade however dropped back into her chair, heavily, he'd have me believe it was all the third. Though most of what he said all had a ring of truth to it. 
Of everyone who was involved, the third was the one who would have been at the head of any decision involving the Uzumaki or Naruto. And it was perhaps a little too convenient that Yuzushio Bikyur was destroyed not long after the leaf had received Kushina to be sealed with the Kyubi. Curious that. She didn't like it and it stunk to high hell. Fishing out a secret bottle of sake and taking a drink, the older woman did her best to toss all of it out of her mind for now. She'd be able to puzzle over it for the next few weeks, and warn Naruto's little friends to quit digging into it themselves. She did not want them on Danzo's radar. No telling what he might do. Scene change, it was a few days later, and a bright and shiny day found Team 7 of all places on a ship, headed to a new land they had never been before. Naruto was enjoying himself as he had plenty of free time to work on seals and goof off with his teammates while around them the filming crew were hard at work transforming and utilizing the ship as a film set. Today found Naruto on the upper deck, scribbling away at a scroll while everyone else milled about on the lower deck. He felt like he was so close to something. Timespace seals were weird to say the least, but they had so much potential. And it was his sword retrieval seal that was giving him another new idea. While the book Orochimaru gave him had plenty of new notes and seals for him to work through, it was incomplete. Hinata Scroll had mentioned Yuzushio a few times, but he doubted he'd ever get the chance to go there. At least not without some type of vacation. Hearing the steps creak near him, Naruto looked back to see the taller Yuki climbing the deck, yo. Holding up a hand, the girl paused for a moment, before deciding to join him. Do you promise not to geek out on me? Naruto nodded absently, I'm a fan and want an autograph sure, but I'm firmly in work mode right now. Adding a line to his seal and puzzling over it for a bit, he referenced his mother's book before continuing along, what about you? Not gonna run off again are ya? Yuki looked away, I'd say, unless I'm going to go for a swim, there's no chance of that. Looking over the side to watch the waves go by, the young woman tried not to get lost in her thoughts. It had been a long time since she had left the land of snow, after all. To be going back for a movie was not how she pictured it would go. Do you, think we all have a fate? Her father's death at her uncle's hand locked in her mind. Not really. Everyone can work and make a path for themselves. Fate is for those who refuse to make their life better. For those looking for an excuse on why their life sucks. Niji came to mind for him, that boy always claiming fate controlled everything. He sure got a reality check Uzumaki style. But what if you aren't strong enough? Naruto paused, raising his ink brush, then become strong. And if you can't grow strong even with effort, find friends, surround yourself with allies, and you'll become strong together. You don't have to go it alone after all. Naruto actually looked at the dark-haired girl now, slightly confused that the usually surly girl was talking so freely to him. Pretty heavy topic for an actress. Wanting to say she wasn't really one just to see his reaction, Yuki shrugged. Despite your demeanor when we met, you seem level-headed and capable. Plus, the producer mentioned that you have some fame to your name as well. I figured one famous person could talk to another at the least. Still not knowing about his bingo book listing, Naruto however did figure he might have made a name for himself through the Chunin exams themselves after thoroughly trouncing a Hyuga. Not that they had gotten word on the results. What with the invasion and then not having a Hokage all this time? Maybe they'd get some news when they returned. Well, for this mission, just consider me your knight in shining armor. I won't let anything happen to you. Yuki plucked at his black jacket, more like a black knight, aren't you? Still gonna protect you, believe it. They lapsed into silence then, Naruto working on his seal and Yuki just enjoying the view while she could between scenes. She could admit at the moment that Naruto's confidence was somewhat infectious. Not that she was going to be storming the daimyo's palace by herself any time soon. No that was a dream she had given up long ago, with her father and her people. So she would continue to live in this fantasy, an actress with no home to return to. Below them, both the director and her manager were gathering people and finally looked up to see Yuki, darling, please get ready. We still have a few scenes to film, before we call it quits for the day. The boisterous man in polka dots was all smiles. Yuki sighed, she she stood, dusting off the seat of her pants, thanks for the company, Naruto-san. She reached out a hand. Naruto took her hand into his, subtly allowing two clones in beetle form to transfer to her, no sweat, like I said, I'm here to protect you. Or to talk if you need it. Watching as she smiled and went below deck to get ready, the boy made two new clones to replace those he had just sent off. Never a bad time to be paranoid if one was to believe Kakashi-sensei. 
Now that he was alone, he was able to get back to his scroll. He was still pissed off that Orochimaru kept escaping from his bombs, was there a way to slow him down with a seal? Teleporting the bomb to him would still give him a chance to run away, but what if he could attach a seal to him that slowed him down? Or stopped him entirely? Decisions had to be made. Climbing up the steps and keeping out of the way, the rest of Team 7 found Naruto muttering and chuckling to himself. Sakura shivered only a little, I hate it when he gets that way. Sasuke nudged the blonde who looked up at them with a grin, you were doing it again. Doing what? That creepy, I'm going to blow up the world laugh. I don't do that. You so, do that. Kakashi sighed and turned back to watch the film crew getting ready, you know, we do have a job to do. Naruto nodded at Sasuke's jab and sealed his supplies away, I mean, unless a member of the crew is after her, what are we going to worry about? Standing and joining them all at the rail, they had front row seats to a live performance of the actress's talent. Sitting there for a few minutes and watching quietly, looks of astonishment grew on all of the genin's faces. She's like a different person. Sasuke nodded, hard to put that act in the same headspace as that gloomy runaway. Naruto nodded as they watched her pause the scene so her manager, Sandeo could give her eye drops to finish out the scene. Kakashi waved at the teens as he made his way closer to the set, remember, this is an A-rank mission, keep that in mind. Plenty of people go after famous actors and actresses all the time. Then he was gone, leaving the teens alone. Sakura sighed, if only she wasn't such a grump. Sasuke agreed, yeah, if only there was someone with a personality built to cut through grumps super easily. Neither said anything else from either side of their comrade, who had an irritated look on his face. Sakura was grinning, why if only she had this mega fan with a super positive attitude who could watch over her for this trip specifically. Sasuke nodded with a hand on his chin in a sagely manner, you're right Sakura, if only we had someone like that. Oh screw off. I'll watch her alright. The rest of the day and evening flew by from there. With the day's scenes finished and the crew winding down for tomorrow, eventually Naruto was left alone. He wasn't going to be sleeping in Yuki's room after all. Like she said earlier, it wasn't like she was going to be going for a swim. So that gave him plenty of time during the night to work on his project and rebuild a V2 glass bomb while he was at it. Eventually, it was Kakashi who had to drag the boy below deck to get some sleep, several new scrolls sealed on his person with a tired smile on his face. In the morning while everyone else was trying to wake up it was an excited director that had everyone moving. Come, come quickly. Film crew and ship crew racing above deck with Team 7 doing the same, they were all met with the sight of a giant glacier in their path. This, this is perfect. The director pointed at the crew, get everyone up and ready, we can film a bit here before making it all the way to snow. Sakura sighed, he's lively, isn't he? Naruto crossed his arms, it's called passion. Sasuke donned a cloak while handing one off to a grateful Sakura, it's called being too early in the morning for this. Kakashi tried handing one of the brown cloaks to Naruto, it's going to get cold from here we're pretty far north. Naruto shrugged, I've got a personal heater, I'm good. That the QB growled at him that he wasn't some mere heater put a smile on the boy's face. They all made sure to stay out of the way as the ship crew brought the boat alongside the floating mass of ice and began unloading people and equipment, at least enough for the film crew to get some scenes done for the day. As everything was being set up and Naruto checked to make sure his disguised clones were still with Yuki, the ninja sat back as filming began. A scene with Yuki and two others facing off against a lone adversary. Everything seemed to be going well and smooth until a point higher up on the glacier exploded. That was from an exploding tag. Kakashi nodded, everyone let's move, it's time to work. Kakashi looked directly at Naruto, capture first, explode second if you can't. Getting a nod Team 7 surged forward to the confusion of the film crew. Kakashi however was focused on the man standing and grinning down at them. Kakashi. My it's been some time, you are going to run away this time are you? Nada Roga remembered the leaf ninja that had taken the princess away. This would be a good time for a rematch. Further down the mountain, his two teammates made themselves known, a woman named Fubuki and a man named Mizor. Both wore chakra armor of the snow ninja, and both were grinning at the Team 7 genin. Naruto nodded to Sasuke, I'll take the fat one. Sasuke nodded, sure, leave the woman to me. Sakura frowned, how am I always on protection duty? Neither answered as they surged forward through the snow, you bastards. 
Naruto made a brace of clones, all of them jumping forward at the bigger man who was pulling some type of board from his back. Ah, the kid wants to play? A clone was already in his face, seals on his wrist shining, cocky, aren't ya? The explosion came, only marginally moving him, but then there were several more. Naruto watched on with a frown, checking the clone's memories, while he himself watched the man get battered back and forth. Seeing odd chakra block most of the explosions, he was satisfied, as eventually the clones broke through, sending the man flying unconscious. They're wearing some kind of armor that protects them. Gonna have to overwhelm them with something massive. Directing his clones to strip the enemy ninja, and tie him up, Naruto was already turning to help Sasuke, if he needed it. Sasuke didn't respond, as he himself noticed his throne kunai were blocked by the purple barrier, so considered his options. Of course he had something, but he'd have to be fast. He didn't have the same chakra level as Naruto after all. Performing hand signs, and inhaling, he frowned at the ice needles coming his way, grand fireball. Fire left his lips, melting all of the incoming projectiles, and continuing on towards his target. Knowing however that she would be safe he was already moving, Sharingan already active and Chidori coming to life. Ah, is that all you have brat? Your teammate even told you our secret. Fubuki, however was frowning. Mizor should have grabbed the princess by now, but she couldn't see him anymore. Throwing up an ice barrier to protect herself, she missed the boy who completed his shunshin and ended up next to her. Turning at hearing the snow crunch next to her over the sound of the fireball connecting with the ice wall, she tried backing away. Sasuke, however wouldn't give her the chance, hand and body leaping forward, Chidori. Pumping more chakra than was probably wise into the technique, Sasuke felt his hand encounter the barrier. The moment gave the woman a chance to dodge slightly, but the compact piercing nature of Sasuke's attack overwhelmed it within moments. He surged forward, hand piercing her shoulder and destroying the armor, leaving Fubuki to collapse in pain on the ground. In another few seconds, Sasuke had her bound, gagged and following Naruto's example, out of her armor. Even if it was damaged, he didn't want to give her the chance. Kakashi and Nadar were fighting back and forth along the mountain, Kakashi, with a smile while Nadar was slowly growing more and more frustrated. You've grown since then. Kakashi nodded, a lot has happened and things change. Tell me, how is Doto? Nadar was making hand seals, you're going to find out once we've beaten you. Finishing his seals, the ground below them buckled, great ice whale. Following the name, a massive whale of ice broke through the ground, forcing Kakashi to back away. Taking a moment to look back, he noticed Naruto and Sasuke both dragging their opponents back towards the ship and crew. Hmm, guess I'm free to be a bit more serious. Lifting his headband and exposing his eye, the sensei of Team 7 quickly finished a set of hand signs himself. Great water dragon. The dragon rose from the waters and aimed itself for Nadar, who was smirking. Tearing dragon fierce tiger. The technique was quick to freeze the water dragon, and both elder ninja repositioned to strike again. Back with the others, Naruto had clones take the knocked-out snow ninja to the ship while he met up with Sasuke and Sakura, think we should help Kakashi-sensei? Sakura relaxed a bit and shook her head, we'd probably be in the way. Sasuke nodded, come on, let's help, get everyone back to the ship. They all moved to do so, while Naruto broke off early to where Sandeo was trying to convince Yuki to move. Please Yuki, we have to go. I can't, I can't move. Naruto rolled his eyes, coming in between them without a word and hoisting the taller woman up and onto his back. H hey. Naruto sighed as they started back for the ship, I told you didn't I? He turned his head to look back towards her, I'll be your knight. You have nothing to worry about with me here. Feeling the woman slump against him, he had a feeling this was more than just the surprise of a ninja battle occurring so suddenly. They made good time, Naruto having to make a new clone to take Yuki below deck and soon enough everyone else was back on the ship and waiting on the battling Kakashi. Sakura turned to her friends, this isn't looking good. I can level this glacier if needed. Sasuke shook his head, something tells me that's a bad idea. Before their eyes multiple large whales made of snow and ice began to rampage from under the ice, breaking the iceberg apart. Kakashi was soon seen racing back to the ship with no one pursuing him, and he was able to join them with no trouble. Naruto however was grinning, okay so now I can level this place? Kakashi put a hand on his head and ruffled his hair, let's not go crazy, we've defeated our enemies and the crew is safe. My opponent retreated once he saw we captured his own team. That Kakashi was seconds away from putting a Raikiri in the man's chest irked him. 
He didn't want to give him a chance to make a comeback. Where did you put them? Naruto hooked a thumb to the stairs, storage hold, they're covered in suppression seals and rope. They won't be moving on their own for a while. Kakashi turned to all of his students, good work you three. I'll go get some information, you watch over the crew. Hi. All three chorused together while their teacher left them to their own devices. Sakura turned to Naruto, how many village ending bombs do you have on you now? Naruto shrugged, enough for every major village I think. Maybe. Sasuke sighed, it was a mistake for you to learn anything about making bombs. Says you, it saved our bacon plenty by now. And also nearly killed us. You're just mad, cause my skills are awesome. Sakura slapped both of the boys before walking away, can't you two be normal for like, ten minutes? Both watched her go before turning to each other, Naruto grinning at the raven-haired boy, don't say it. Naruto had his hands up and above his head, say what? You know what? Naruto was again, all grins, I'm just saying, you could mellow her out in like, an evening. We're not talking about this. You're the one who says he needs to rebuild his clan. I can't believe this. She would be so willing to help too. You're still going? Maybe she wouldn't be so uptight all the time? That's it, I'm done, go find someone else to annoy. And like that Sasuke was gone, Naruto holding up a peace sign. Mission, annoy the teammates, till they leave you alone, success. Making his own way down into the decks, Naruto had one place in mind, however, and that was Yuki's room. Something about the way she had acted was bothering him and he couldn't get his mind off of it. It was like an out-of-place puzzle piece, he needed to find where it went. Seeing no one around and what looked like Kakashi-sensei walking away, the blonde knocked on the door to Yuki's room before heading inside. Inside the sparsely furnished room Yuki was laying in bed seemingly asleep. That didn't change as Naruto picked up a stool and carried it over, taking a seat next to the head of the bed and looking out the window. It was pretty peaceful, he admitted to himself, to hear the waves crashing against the boat and feel its motion underneath them. On a dresser, under the window, he spied an odd necklace that must have been Yuki's, but he left it alone. He knew better than to grab other people's things, his own likely to blow someone to bits. You brought me back. Her voice cut through the silence and though Naruto didn't jump, he wasn't quick to look her way either. He listened as she shuffled and sat up completely, arms over her knees. You said you would listen to me, correct? The scene at the iceberg played before her eyes, while at the same time memories of a worse event did the same. Naruto nodded while still watching the waves, yup. Anytime anywhere. Yuki nodded, I have a secret. Waiting for him an interrupt, she continued when he didn't, I'm actually a princess. Actually surprised by the admission, Naruto did his best to contain his emotions, something tells me this has to do with the snow ninja back there? Yuki nodded, my real name is Koyuki Kasahana. My father was the previous daimyo of snow. My uncle, Doto, led a coup and torched our home, killing my father in the process. I escaped, and I've been running ever since. And now you're going back. I wasn't exactly asked to do this. And now that Doto knows I'm here he'll stop at nothing to find me. Naruto nodded, finally turning mismatched eyes back to the young woman, so what's the plan? Pausing and taking in the boy before her, Koyuki considered that. That he and his team had taken down two of the snow ninja said a lot. His reputation really did mean something and wasn't just for show. If she hadn't seen them fight so well, she would probably tell him they couldn't change anything. I don't know, I'm terrified of going back. I had to watch my father die and then abandon my home. Here she curled into ball, life isn't a movie, we don't always get a happy ending. Naruto nodded, you're right, it isn't. But sometimes we can force it to be if we're willing to work for it. This is your home, if anyone is going to clean it up and help others have a better life, it should be you. I told ya, I'm your knight, give the word and I'll burn everything to the ground. Koyuki chuckled and shook her head, I don't think we need to go that far. She hadn't considered it before, actually going back. Doto had seemed so much larger than her, able to do anything, get away with anything. And here was a team of ninja, brushing his efforts aside. I don't want to watch anyone else die. I'd like to promise and say it won't happen, but life is still tough like that. I can promise you that me and my team will get the job done. You're making me consider taking on my uncle and his ninja. She matched her gaze with his, silence once more descending on them both. She was the first to look away however, can I ask something of you? Already did. 
Brat, he's going to come for me, I know it. And you yourself said if I wasn't strong enough, that I'd need to make friends and ask for help. She looked away from the boy now, a thoughtful look on her face as she considered what she was about to say. If my uncle comes, can you, can you kill him? If that's what you want. No chance to reconcile or imprison him? He killed my father and everyone else in the palace for his lust for power. He doesn't deserve a second chance. Koyaki turned back to him, consider this a request from a country's daimyo. Naruto bowed lightly, then he's done for. We'll take back this country for you, and you can rebuild your dreams. Koyaki focused on the view outside for a moment, you're big on fighting fate and making your way yourself. Can you tell me, what made you this way? What was your life like? Naruto sighed, that's a long and pretty shitty story. We have time and I'm interested. That she was honestly considering taking action was solely because of him. Less than a handful of conversations, but a chance to watch him actually fight, and she was ready to believe in him. So she sat and listened to his story. Of him growing up and his treatment by his village. The first betrayal of a teacher and his greatest to him, triumph. Then the whirlwind that his life became. The training, bonding with his team, the boring missions, the exciting missions. His first real confrontation and learning more about the realities of life as a ninja. So much in so little time. He had experienced so much, and even now as she sat and listened she wanted to be upset for him. Life had not been kind to Naruto Uzumaki, nor had many of the adults in his life it seemed. But he always got back up when life tried to kick him down. He made friends and comrades, people he could trust. He learned and grew as fast as he could, to protect those he considered both important and precious. She wondered, what would that be like, to have someone like that? As Naruto was explaining how he had brought back his village's leader, she sighed and straightened out, Naruto Kuen. Pausing as he was about to launch into a tirade about how much of a pervert his sensei was, Naruto looked at the girl next to him, huh, yeah what's up? Can you help me up, I'd like to find the others. Though she needed to focus on reclaiming her country, she felt like she had heard her father mention something about the Uzumaki once. Well if things went well, maybe she could help the boy as well. Sure, hold on. Helping her up, they finally left the room and made it to the hallway. Exploring for a bit, they finally tracked down the remaining members of Team 7 and the director and his assistant talking it out. Koyuki smiled as she saw Sandeo sitting there with everyone else. At least he was safe. How could I pass up this chance? A one-in-a-lifetime chance to make a movie about a real princess taking back her home, I must record this. Koyuki sighed as she leaned against the doorframe, Sandeo. Said man stood up, my lady. Are you okay? What this about me taking back a country? Sande aside, I know you may not want to, but so many of us want to return you to your proper place. Your father wouldn't have wanted you running away for your entire life. We have support, there are troops waiting for us in the capital. Please all we need if your belief in us, and I'm sure we can do this. Koyuki didn't seem moved, we must do this. Rolling her eyes, she let Naruto move past her to join his team, someone else already convinced me to take action. Eyes traveling over everyone, the actor smirked, so thanks to a plucky ninja, we're going to take back my home. Kakashi sighed as he looked at his student, you can't help but get involved, can you? Naruto was all grins as Koyuki made plans with the director and Sandeo, I'm just a regular ray of sunshine. Sasuke frowned, that's got to be a skill. Sakura nodded, what would we call it? Motivate no jutsu? Talk no jutsu? No more sad no jutsu? You both know I'm right here, right? Naruto tried to stop his eyebrow from twitching, really he did. Kakashi ruffled his hair, how about therapy no jutsu? The traitor. You're all lucky I can't enact my violence on a boat. Just you wait, when we get back home, I'm coming for you. All of them knew he would make good on his promise, but for now they would be having their fun. Besides, it wasn't like he was going to make a habit of saving princesses and toppling countries. Scene change, the next day found the ship docked and unloaded, with the film crew and the ninja on their way towards their next filming location. Naruto was in the same car as Koyuki, tying a small but bright orange scroll to the end of a kunai. Once done, he stashed it away in a pocket before relaxing back in his seat, still going to act. Koyuki nodded, I'll still go by Yuki Fujikase as a stage name, acting is something I enjoy. But if this works, Koyuki Kazahana will make an appearance again as the Daimyo of Snow. 
She looked at his curiously, do you have a plan for my uncle? He's not a super strong ninja known as a legend across the nations, is he? No I don't believe so. He's not super powerful and never been beaten before? No, he used Snow Ninja loyal to him, but he's not particularly powerful I don't think. So no chance he could run, or likely counter an Uzumaki-based seal array. Good. I have something for him. Just make sure you stay behind me if he shows up. Koyuki nodded, I'm trusting you, my knight. I'm gonna get teased for that, aren't I? Just a little. However, she did have a question for the younger boy, you mentioned part of your current dream is to learn about your clan, maybe rebuild. Do you have any leads? Naruto shook his head, no, but hopefully soon I'll have some time to go visit our ancestral home. Maybe I can find something there. Koyuki nodded, while well, I have some vague memories of my father mentioning the Uzumaki. If I come across anything, I'll make sure to let you know. In the next car ahead of them, Sandeu was explaining what the previous daimyo had tried to accomplish as they were coming out of a tunnel. If they hadn't frozen over, we would be driving on train rails right now. He had hoped to one day link all of the country by rail. Kakashi nodded, only, this country is nearly always covered in snow. Nodding as the vehicle they were in pulled off to the side and came to a halt, Sandeu replied to the ninja, it nearly bankrupted the country. There was however one last invention we never got to see in use. Kakashi thought back to the two ninja he had interrogated, something about a vault and a treasure? Correct, no one knows what's inside, but Dota wants it. I have faith that it's just what our country needs to rebuild itself. As Sandeu and the others assisted with setting up with the film crew, they all turned as Naruto and Koyuki made their way over. Yo! Naruto held a hand up, looking much like his sensei. Koyuki walked past them to speak with the director. Don't let your guard down, we're in enemy territory now. Kakashi gave advice, while the genin listened. They were making plans to overthrow a daimyo, or a pretender at least. Hey! What's that there? One of the film crew was pointing at the tunnel, where they could see iron rails appearing from the snow. Steam and water flowing away from them to reveal full train tracks from underneath the ice. Sandeu however had an idea and was already moving, someone is pumping chakra through the rails to melt the snow, a train has to be coming. Which meant Doto had caught up to them. He was up and over the ridge, off to find the secret force of men he had cobbled together. Naruto was looking towards Koyuki, we sticking to the plan? Koyuki nodded, I'll get Doto to come out and point him out to you, if you need it. That's all you need? Naruto nodded as his team looked on with some confusion, that's all I need. Naruto, please tell me this isn't experimental. Kakashi was looking around the snowy hillside they were on, there is a cliff, not far away. Naruto grinned, no major explosion from this one. That none of them believed him went unsaid, but they trusted that he at least wasn't going to use something that could kill them all. So they turned to help all of the film crew make it up and over the ridge overlooking the hill they were on. Leaving all of the vehicles behind, they could just make out the sound of the train coming along. Soon it was the shaking the ground, before finally the two car wide and several car long train made its appearance, already slowing so that it could come to a stop. Sasuke looked and wood and metal construction over, well that's huge. Snow seems to really lean on technology. Kakashi nodded, the previous daimyo had plenty of projects, some were quite ahead of their time. Train coming to a stop, there was noise from external speakers. Oh Koyuki dear, why don't you come on out? It's been so long since I've seen your face. A deep man's voice issued out from speakers along the train. Everyone turned to look at the girl who nodded before standing, Naruto at her side did the same. You ready? No. You'll be there though, right? You ain't getting rid of me that easy. Together, they made their way down the ridge. Behind them, Sandeu and fifty men gathered and made their way down the hill. They would not leave their princess alone now. Koyuki walked ahead of Naruto to stand alone, before the giant train with a frown on her face, Doto. You could at least show your pathetic face. Sucking his teeth, said man opened a hatch and climbed out from where he was. The lone ninja to return, Nadar, coming out behind him and standing with him. Such hateful words young lady. We'll have to fix that. Now come along, before we have a repeat of ten years ago. With a wave of his hand doors on the side of the train opened up to reveal rows upon rows of kunai launchers. Koyuki took a step forward, kill me, and you won't get what you desire. You need me alive, so cut the evil mastermind act. 
because if anyone else dies today, I'll toss myself over the cliff, before helping you do anything. With a sigh Doto nodded, at least the girl seemed like she was going to come along without a fight, he made another motion, and the weapons all closed up again. Fine fine little princess. Anything to say to your followers before we go? You know something. When I came here, I wanted nothing to do with this. Not you, not Snow, none of it. I don't want to suffer anymore. Shoulders shaking as she fought back real tears, the first since she had escaped this country. Now though? I want to see this country prosper. I want to see the spring my father said we could build. There is no spring in Snow Child. That was your father's silly delusion. Kuyuki smirked, well there's no more you as well. Stepping aside, Naruto whipped his new special kunai at the man. Doto sighed as he watched the kunai bounce off his armor, foolish bow dashed the explosion wasn't the biggest Naruto had ever made. Barely engulfing half of the train car. However once the smoke cleared everyone was given front row seats to something they couldn't fully describe. A sphere of orange energy surrounded Doto and Nadar, where on its surface multiple seals moved and floated to keep the sphere intact. Inside was another matter entirely as the sealing array Naruto had cooked up did its job. Doto and Nadar seemed to be moving in slow motion, explosion after explosion rocking them back and forth. It was the time-slowed event that allowed them all to see the precise moment their armor failed, for the explosions to tear them apart, and finally for those parts to be atomized. Outside of the sphere, Kakashi and the rest of Team 7 alighted next to Naruto. Um, what the hell is that? Sakura was pointing at the horror show. Naruto had his hands in his pockets, super time dilation applied to anyone inside the seal, mixed with a barrier array and a ceiling array. Nothing gets in or out once it starts, and that includes the several thousand explosive seals I've layered into it. And, when it's done? Pointing at the sphere, they all watched as it shrunk and took everything within the sphere with it. That included a small portion of the train car. Nothing left, no super explosion, no mess, no fuss. Sasuke sighed, how did we miss him playing with space and time? That sounds like a horrible idea. Sakura agreed, absolutely a horrible idea. Hee hey. Don't ignore us, we still have a train full of kunai and ninja. Some nameless snow ninja was standing and pointing at them all, causing them all to frown. As they he didn't just see their leader literally get blown apart in slow motion. Naruto pointed at Koyuki, this is your rightful daimyo Koyuki Kazahana. Does anyone here really want to try to kill her right now? Unsealing several scrolls, all different colors and sizes, the boy was grinning in a way that had everyone nervous, I'll happily teach you how bad of an idea that is. Koyuki put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, let me, deal, with this, okay? Seeing the boy put his things away and nod, the young princess stepped forward, my father was killed by my uncle. He promised you riches that never came, and glory that was false. I can't promise you glory or wealth, but I can promise you that we will rebuild the land of snow into a nation we can be proud of. My father always dreamed of melting this frozen wasteland and making it into something greater. I'm here to continue that dream. Can you stand and call yourselves Ninja of Snow, to follow me in this dream? She motioned to where Doto used to be, or will you stand against me? There was much muttering, before another ninja stepped forward, of course we are with you, Daimyo Kazahana-sama. Please, by train the mansion with the vault is not far from here. Koyuki nodded and turned to the other, join me? Let's put an end to this for good. Team 7, the film crew, and Sandeu, and the rebels all did just that. Packing onto the train with the formerly Doto-aligned ninja, and making way for the daimyo mansion. Sandeu and the rebels were hard-pressed to be kind to the ninja that had done their best to hunt them down all this time. However the consensus among those ninja was usually the same. They took orders from their leaders. Currently that was Koyuki, so they had no quarrel with the rebels anymore. The director was having a field day, filming authentic reactions from everyone and getting to watch real time as a princess came to power. Kakashi was still berating Naruto within the confines of the train about experimenting with seals while on missions. Unnoticed by either was Sasuke handing Sakura a handful of Ryo for a lost vest. He didn't know why he thought Naruto wouldn't use something experimental, but apparently Sakura was paying better attention than he was lately. However eventually Koyuki pulled Naruto away for a conversation. Tucking them both away into a small corner so they could be alone, Koyuki tried to make this quick. Naruto, I want to say now, because of you, my country has a chance to heal, one way or another. I did say I would help you. Naruto had a puzzled look on his face. 
The princess however shook her head, you told me about the leaf, and everything that happened to you. So I'm now going to do what I can to help you. So for now, if you ever need it, you can make your way here. To rest, to hide, to rebuild, anything. If you need it, Snow will offer it. Do you understand? I dash Naruto tried to answer, but choked up for a moment, once again caught off guard by someone willing to help him. Thinking it over, he nodded finally, thank you. Koyukiheim. Smiling the soon-to-be daimyo nodded, to anyone else I'm still Yuki. But hearing Koyuki from you sounds right. She turned to go find Sandeu before pausing as Naruto captured her wrist. What is it, Naruto-kun? Naruto seriously thought about what he was about to give her before deciding that just in case he might as well do it. So reaching into an inner pocket of his jacket, he pulled out two slips of paper. They're seals. Place one in a room you know, won't be disturbed. Keep the other with you as often as you can. If I do need to come here, they'll hopefully help me. He wasn't sure if they would work, but he could set it up to try it out someday. Watching as she took both and quietly slipped them into her clothes, she nodded and walked away, leaving him to go back to his team. True to the ninja's words, everyone was soon at the mansion and walking within, Koyuki and Kakashi in the lead. Kakashi pointed the way after getting the information from the ninja he had interrogated on the ship earlier. This led them first inside where Sandeu and many of the loyalists he had gathered and Snow Ninja began to break off, performing duties none of the Leaf Ninja were privy to. Then back outside to a snow-covered courtyard where they stopped before a machine with an odd hole facing them. Kakashi stepped back with his team to give Koyuki space. So this is what it was for. Taking her necklace off, Koyuki placed it into the hole and turned it like a key. Stepping away she steadied herself as it came to life, rumbling and shaking the ground around them. In front of them a hologram of a man looking much like Koyuki herself came to life. Dear Koyuki, I promised you that one day we would bring spring to the land of snow. It's now up to you, to see this through. The hologram was smiling at them, before after a moment it faded away, Koyuki reaching out to it for a moment, before smiling. Around them, the very air seemed to be warming, the snow was melting rapidly, and eventually, the entire area was clearing of snow. Laughing now, Koyuki spun in a circle and ditched her thick jacket. He really did it, it's really spring. Koyuki was laughing as everyone else looked around in wonder. A machine that could affect the very environment on this level was unheard of anywhere else. Kakashi watched the steam rising in the air, coalescing patterns of light dancing before them. Sakura smiled, it's like we released a rainbow. Naruto walked forward to the smiling girl, see what happens, when you challenge fate? Overcome with emotion and in the moment, Koyuki surged forward, grabbing Naruto in a tight hug. Lowering her voice to just them she whispered in his ear, You're always welcome here, Naruto Uzumaki, my black knight. Releasing him with a kiss to the cheek, Koyuki danced away and waved as Sandeu was walking out and toward them. Sakura sighed, There's no way. Sasuke nodded, Wanna take bets on how Ino and Hinata are gonna take it? Sakura crossed her arms, I'm not touching that for all the Ryo in Kanoha. Team 7 could count this as a successful mission and another notch of their belt for helping a country from under a dictator. Odd that so far, their two missions out of the Leaf Village ended that way. Surely that wouldn't become a thing. Hopefully. Maybe. Chapter 15 Life for Naruto was good and back to normal, for the most part. His team had returned to their home village, victorious and getting more than a few odd looks from Tsunade. But they were back and training daily while waiting on their next mission. Kakashi-sensei had expressly forbidden him from working on any more explosives for the time being which was fine for him. He had two new projects to work on anyway. Between their nature manipulation training and his own seal practice, explosions could take a back seat for a little while. So he, Sasuke, and Sakura trained and hung out often. Something he wouldn't be complaining about. Maybe getting out of the village had been a good thing for him after all. However today as their training was ending, a raven carrying a scroll landed on Kakashi-sensei's outstretched arm and paused training for them all. Curious the genin watched as Kakashi took the note from the bird's leg and let it fly off, reading the note quietly. Watching his eyebrows raise, all three of them were now very interested in what was going on. Huh, Naruto, report to the Hokage. Kakashi tucked the note into a pouch. Sakura and Sasuke looked at the boy for a minute, before Ryo notes started to come out. I didn't do anything. Sakura looked at Sasuke and completely ignored the boy, 20 says he blew something up. 
Sasuke shook his head, nah, it's gotta be some prank, he pulled. I haven't pulled a prank in months. Sakura slapped the Ryo into the other boy's hand, you know him, he's always experimenting, even when sensei tells him to quit. He had to blow something up for Hokage-sama, to summon him. Sasuke slapped his twenty on top of hers, except he's been working on his scrolls all this time, even gave his word he wouldn't blow anything up in the village. Exactly, in the village, who says he isn't sneaking out? Hello, I'm right here? Why are you placing bets on me in the first place? Kakashi sighed and walked forward, go on Naruto, go see what the Hokage wants. Watching the boy grumble and walk away with his hands in his pockets, the older meme turned to his other two students. That wasn't very nice. He likes it. Sakura was bold enough to maintain eye contact with her sensei. Sasuke nodded, it's our thing. Kakashi nodded, 20 says you're both wrong. I can still hear you lot. Sakura pocketed Kakashi's Ryo, deal. Naruto grumbled the whole way, I didn't do anything this time, damn it. Taking to the rooftops, he made easy time to the Hokage Tower. Taking the stairs with another grumble, he idly checked his pockets and made sure everything was in place. Being paranoid was starting to pay off for him, might as well keep it up. He still hadn't tried out the seals yet, but he figured it wasn't an emergency. Plus he should try one a little closer to home first, lest he end up in turdimensional paste. Seeing and waving to Shizun, the blonde found the energy to smile, Hey Nechan, what did I do? Shizun shook her head at the blonde, nothing Naruto Kuen. I can't say, but this is important for you. We have someone to wait for. Might as well take a seat. Naruto did just that, bringing out a notebook and picking up where he left off. The slow-down bomb he had put together worked, but now he needed to condense it down. Maybe he could inscribe it all onto a special kunai? Oh just wait Orochimaru, the Uzumaki was coming for you soon. Shizun did her best to ignore the dark chuckle the boy let loose as he scribbled in his book. Growing up around legendary ninja, she was rather used to it, just not in one so young. It was, creepy. From the hallway, Shikamaru walked in looking as bored as ever, yo Naruto. Naruto looked up, hey Shikamaru, what's up? Putting his work away he stood and approached the other boy. Got a summons, guess you did too. Yup, wonder what it's about. Shizun stood and opened the door, now that you're both here, why don't you go and find out? Letting the boys inside, she closed the door and went back to her work. Naruto and Shikamaru walked into the side of Tsunade being nearly buried under a mountain of paperwork. Grumbling and signing away, Shikamaru tried coughing to gain her attention. Though with that not working Naruto took deep breath. Cupping his mouth with his hands, he nearly missed the Sanban that tried to skewer him. Dodging aside at the last second, Naruto had his hands on his hips, you could acknowledge us at least. I'm busy brat. Be patient. Responding without looking at them, Tsunade reached down and pulled free a chunin flak jacket. Only one. I've had time to review the chunin exam notes and recommendations from various instructors and proctors. Shikamaru Nara, you've been promoted to the rank of chunin. You've been found capable of leading a team due to skill and ability. Tossing the boy the uniform apparel, she sighed, report back to your sensei, from time to time you may be required to perform missions on your own or with different teams. However, Team 10 is your main team. Sighed and bemoaning the extra work, Shikamaru nodded, thank you for the honor, Hokage-sama. Putting the jacket on and waiting, his gaze landed on Naruto, you supposed to be a witness then? Tsunade sighed then, signing the last sheet she needed to for now, Naruto in my opinion has reached the rank of Chunin as well. Excellent battle strategy along with field tactics and abilities. Never mind the raw talent to protect the entire village during an invasion. However, there's been a snag. Standing and grabbing her green jacket from the back of her chair, she motioned to Naruto, we need to have a word with the council about your promotion. So let's go, Nara, you have your orders, don't you? Raising an eyebrow, the young Chunin took the hint and excused himself while giving Naruto a quiet congratulations as well. Naruto nodded, bumping fists, with the lazy dude, for a moment, before turning back to the Hokage. I get the feeling I'm not going to like this. Tsunade nodded as she walked around her desk, I don't either. It's rare for the council to get involved with the promotion of any ninja. The last time I think it happened was with Enko's special jonin status, and that was because Orochimaru trained her. They thought her a flight risk. Naruto walked with her out of her office, his hands at his side, so what? All my senseis are super loyal to the leaf. 
I literally tried to blow up Orochimaru, twice. Beats me kid, but we'll be finding out soon. Walking down through the Hokage Tower, then into the antechamber, before the council room, Tsunade turned to the boy. Some advice, Naruto. Naruto looked up to her quietly, for once catching on that she was being completely serious with him. I know you have some idea that the council doesn't like you, for multiple reasons. Do your best to keep calm, don't get angry no matter what. And don't agree to anything without thinking it through as best you can. Once inside I cannot help you, do you understand? Naruto nodded, again touched, that she was willing to give him advice, or help him at all, I got it, Bachan. Brat. Smiling, she led the way, and walked inside to a noisy room, Naruto behind her. The noise level died down as the chamber noticed not only the Hokage was present, but the current ticket for the day as well. Walking around and taking her seat at the head of the chamber, Tsunade sighed, well, you wanted this prospective Chunin here to question him about his conduct, let's get started. The Shinobi Council was made up of the heads of all of the village's prominent ninja clans, along with several influential merchant and banking members, and also the elder council members. Naruto could recognize Kiba's mom and Hinata's dad purely from the facial features. But others he could not recognize at all. The merchants and bankers did not look happy to see him at all as well. Sitting below the Hokage, the elder group, consisting of Danzo, Hamura, and Koharu started the meeting off. Danzo was the one who stood first, this meeting is being brought to the floor to decide whether to approve or deny Jenin Uzumaki to the rank of Chunin. The floor is open for debate. Tsum Inazuka frowned and leaned back, this is foolish, since when do we care about promotions? The kid trounced that Hyuga didn't he? That's Chunin level enough for me. The head of the Nara clan, Shikaku nodded along, this is most unusual for the council to get involved with this. Uzumaki Naruto also was instrumental in the defense of the village itself. What logic do we have to deny his promotion? Hamura now stood, there's the question of all of his conduct, before becoming a genin to start with. A known prankster and troublemaker. And apparently a bit of a thief as well. Frowning but making no move to say anything, Naruto watched as the older Choji looked down on him. Do we look at any of the misdeeds of our children once they become genin and ninja of our village? I know my own son was a bit of a rough houser in the academy. But once that headband touches their foreheads, they become loyal and dedicated soldiers. Should we punish them for being children? One of the merchant guild members slammed a hand down on the table, we aren't just talking about playful pranks here. We're talking actual material theft businesses have reported. Vandalism and major losses. How can we trust this, boy, with more responsibility? Naruto wanted to take note that the council member said the word boy much like a curse. As if that was the last thing he wanted to call him. Hamura picked up a sheet of paper, I do have here a list of complaints dating back years involving Uzumaki Kuen. And a list of businesses affected and funds distributed from the Uzumaki clan holdings, to cover damages. Putting the sheet of paper down and staring at the boy now for the first time, Hamura sighed, do you have anything to say about these incidents? Naruto did his absolute best to remain calm, I was never made aware I did anything to anyone that required taking money from my clan's vault or holdings. Nor was I even aware I did such harm to anyone. I was an orphan, and homeless, for a time. I dumpster dived, or scrounged for food, but never, ever, stole. The guild member pointed at the boy now, but that's an admission. You admit to stealing, and not paying others for their possessions. Naruto twitched, but did nothing else. Eyes now locked on Tsunade. Danzo sighed, it could be said that doing what was necessary, to survive, would not, count, as stealing. He was a boy left to his own devices. We had many war orphans, at the time as well, would we punish all of them, for doing what they had to? Hayashi Hyuga coughed, to gain everyone's attention, while I have had no interactions with the boy myself, both my daughter and my nephew speak highly of him. One with admiration while the other with grudging respect. Looking down on Naruto, the boy couldn't really make out the emotion on the man's poker face, you speak of thefts and damage, and yet that was all in the past. We return to the issue that since making Genin and taking missions for the village, he has done nothing but good for us and shown proper respect and loyalty to the village. It was Koharu now to stood, taking the place of Hamura, be that as it may. History shows us the path of the future in many ways. While the ninja side of the council is quick to discount his previous misdeeds, what sort of example would we be showing by allowing a known troublemaker to raise his rank so quickly? We are not denying he may be promoted at a later time, but this was extraordinarily quick. 
under extraordinary circumstances as well. Coughing, Sim interrupted the elder, I'm sorry, I seem to remember just about all of us had our troublemaker years. It's part and parcel of what makes us great leaders. We know the kind of shit ninja can really get into. Sighing and waving at the boy, Sim thought of her own son, it'd be foolish to reap the rewards of his actions, only to deny him something as simple as a rank promotion. Kohara nodded, possibly, however there is one last issue to bring forth. Picking up another sheet and looking it over, she looked directly at the boy in question, did you, or did you not let the demon container from the sand village retreat from the invasion? All of the council members began to murmur, not sure where this was going. Naruto thought hard about it, but couldn't see a reason why he would lie about it. He had gotten the order from Kakashi, after all. Kakashi-sensei gave the order, so yeah, I let him go. Kohara nodded, did your sensei actually give the order, or was there a proxy? Thinking back, he was now starting to get worried, well yeah, it was during the invasion, and he was in the village. He relayed the order through his summon. And are you sure the summon was your jonin senseis? And not one of the sound or sands? Well, Pakan is my sensei's summon. And you're absolutely sure it wasn't under a transformation or jinjutsu, or that you weren't under a jinjutsu? Koharu put down the paper and got to her point. The problem is that you let a major key to the enemy invasion go, giving them a chance to regroup and possibly attack us again. You were also in the company of one of the Leaf's greatest traitors, Orochimaru, and lived to tell about it. Not once, but twice. That's very odd behavior, for a genin. Here she paused to look around the room, before settling back on the obviously angry boy, unless of course you were convinced by him to follow his lead. I would never. The rage that instantly filled the boy nearly caused him to tap into the cubie. That they would accuse him of working with that snake cut something deep inside of him. Hamura stood, be silent boy. Raise your tone again and we'll do more than deny your promotion. Shikaku cleared his through, elders, you are accusing one of our ninja, a very loyal one, at that, of treason. Koharu shook her head, not at all, just that there are many questions that need to be answered. That Uzumaki-san has improved so quickly ahead of his peers, been in contact with multiple legendary ninja, one of which was a traitor, and let another agent of our invasion go, it does not bode well and casts doubt on his character. Hamura nodded, it is that doubt that makes us believe setting him back at least another year to observe him would be best. What is one year going to hurt after all? If he is a loyal leaf neen, he'll still be here and doing his best after all. And if not? No one mentioned what would happen if he was found wanting. Naruto was visibly shaking, but was heeding Tsunade's words, remaining silent as best as he could. Danzo now spoke up, I'm firmly against holding him back. There is no proof of the accusations after all, just circumstance. Hayashi sighed, the council however must consider all angles, and with the current information, there is in fact doubt. Ever a follower of rules, Hayashi did not take the elder's side from personal interest, but procedural. Chose aside, sure there may be doubt, but come on, the kid used a major kinjutsu in order to save the entire village. It nearly killed him, no traitor would do that. Shikaku sighed, unless it was merely a ruse to gain our trust. Hearing gasps, Shikaku shook his head, make no mistake, I don't agree at all, but I have to look at it from the elder's perspective as well. Tsunade now stood, silencing everyone, we need a vote, as Hokage I've already been overruled and must abstain from voting. A show of hands for Uzumaki Naruto's promotion. Danzo, Tsum, Shikaku, Choza, and Inoichi all raised their hands. Before lowering them once counted. And against? All of the merchant and banking members raised their hands, along with Hamura and Koharu and Hayashi. Sighing Tsunade nodded, that's eight against, Jen and Uzumaki will remain as such until the next exams. Looking at Naruto with what she hoped was a concerned look, she nodded, Jen and Uzumaki, you are dismissed. Voice barely above a growl, Naruto nodded, yes, Hokage-sama. Turning smartly, the boy was out of the council doors, within a few breaths. Danzo sighed as he eyed his fellow council members, that was not a wise thing to do. Hamura shrugged, better that than the alternative. From there the council continued with other matters, though a few members left for other duties as it was more civilian duties than ninja affairs. One such member to leave was Danzo, one specific goal in mind. Outside and already making his way down the street, Naruto was a ball of anger. While he would never claim to be the smartest ninja, it was plain enough to see that some of the council had just admitted to his face to stealing from his clan and using excuses from bigoted shop owners to get away with it. 
That meant most likely anything that may have been left of his clan was long gone. That did not sit well with him, but there wasn't anything he could do about it. Groaning and pausing for a moment, leaning again the railing of a footbridge over a small creek, the boy wished more than anything he could get some useful advice right now. Because right now he was considering walking back into the council chambers and threatening them with AV3. Almost unnoticed to the boy, Danzo had caught up with him, a kinda smile on his face, well that could have gone better don't you think, young Uzumaki? Danzo was not Sarutobi, but he could fake it well enough. Scoffing Naruto crossed his arms, they weren't looking to promote me from the start, just wanted to make excuses and gloat to my face. Looking up at the bandaged man, Naruto frowned, why were you willing to promote me? Danzo took a moment to look around the village sprawl, a carefully crafted smile on his face, look around you Naruto. All of this right now is possible because of you. You saved them, all of them. That was a feat worth recognition. I believe that, though my contemporaries do not agree. Well, it's nice to have someone on my side. It was odd to see a kinda smile on this man's face. He seemed to genuinely care about the village. I believe in what is best for Kanoha, and I believe you are part of the future. Seeing he had the boy's attention, Danzo reached into the folds of his kimono and retrieved a book, for you, saved from the council vault. Handing it to the boy, Naruto was quick to see the bright red swirl of the Uzumaki clan on the front. Thank you for this. Was this another adult stepping in to help him when none of the others would? He was a council member, but had been the loudest in defending him. I didn't get your name. Danzo was grinning mentally as the boy took the bait, I am Danzo, young Uzumaki. I think we could be great friends in the future. Start slow and rake him in. He'd have him at his back and call in little time. Saying goodbye Danzo turned and walked back to the tower, he had other work to complete today. Naruto did the same, angling back home to look this new book over. Though as he was walking, he was caught up with curiosity and taking to the back alleys Naruto began flipping through the book as he walked. This wasn't one of his mother's, that much was sure straight from the beginning. The seals it introduced were real, he'd seen some of them before, but something about it was nagging him. The writing was way different from his mom. So maybe another clansman? Flipping through the pages, note after note and scrawled texts he almost couldn't read, it was as he reached the middle of the book things started to dawn on him. This book was a fake. All of the Uzumaki books and scrolls had bits and pieces of the author within its pages. Idle seals, doodles, a certain way they wrote or spoke that bled through on the seals. This however was missing that, like someone was in a hurry and copied what they could and put it down on paper. And as he looked further, he noticed it was missing most of the Uzumaki markings along the page borders, along with at the cover and backing of the book. It did however have other seals scrawled there instead, some of which he didn't recognize, but a few he did. Each had to do with either listening or copying scrolls within its location. Well that settled that, Danzo was a piece of shit as well then. Taking out a blank scroll and sealing the book away, he considered tossing the scroll away in the garbage. That would however clue Danzo into the fact that he knew he was being played and that wouldn't help him right now. Being paranoid and sealing that scroll within another storage scroll, Naruto decided he needed a different set of minds, maybe two individuals he knew he could trust. But that was for tomorrow. Tonight he was tired and emotionally drained. Screw the rest of this day. He'd go and get ramen and try again tomorrow. If tomorrow was just as shitty, he'd really consider blowing something up. Scene change, the next day found Team 7 finishing drills and splitting up for the day, each of the members giving Naruto words of encouragement after they heard about his denied promotion and the interference of the council. This left Naruto alone for a bit, but he decided to stay at the grounds and train, creating clones, with one purpose today, more elemental training. While he himself was working on his own personal seal, another copy of the two he had given Koyuki. No time like the present to try it out. Producing three of them in relatively quick order, before adding a different one to his left arm, he thought about any insurance he could add to this. Thinking about it, he nodded before completing the necessary hand signs and summoning his toad friend Gamakichi. Yo. Hey a bro. Got any candy for me? Laughing, Naruto reached into a pocket and produced a few pieces, just a bit, I don't need anything crazy today, just for you to hang on. After his friend took them, he tossed the seal paper in three corners of the training ground. Oh? No crazy explosions? Even still, the small toad hopped up and into his hair. Nope, not today. Just need you to hang on to me. 
just in case this seal goes wrong and we need to desummon back home. That sounds dangerous. Sorta. Feeling out for the connection between the seal now on his arm and the seals he tossed away, he mental linked them and prepared for the worst. The sense of vertigo before the seal kicked in and suddenly he was across the field. It was like a kawarimi, only hyped up to like eleven. The chakra drain wasn't anything to sneeze at either, he actually felt that one. Whoa, that felt like being summoned. What did you do? Naruto was grinning, figured out a way to summon myself, from one point to another. Oh, this had lots of potential, now only to refine it and try to bring down the chakra usage. Reaching out and feeling for the seals, he could indeed feel the two he had given Koyuki. Though he must have done something wrong, because he could feel a lot more seals in other places. Those connections were faint however, so it had to be some error with his work. Gamakichi hopped away, I think I've heard of another human doing this before, I'd have to check with my pops though. Naruto nodded, it'd help me out if you could. But that was all I needed, unless you wanna hang out. Gamakichi saluted, sorry bro not today, got some stuff I gotta do for once. Maybe tomorrow? Getting an agreement, Gamakichi desummoned himself and left the chuckling Uzumaki to his thoughts. Collecting the seals and thinking it over, he had one more thing to do then to complete his idea. Making the raisin gan throwable, and then add nature manipulation. Though his thoughts were interrupted as he heard arguing behind him. I'm telling you Hanada he's here. Ah, that was Enoheim's voice. And sure enough he saw them both break through the cover. Hey girls, what's up? Hinata was the first to come forward, jacket as usual now open and sporting a crop top that showed off a small amount of midriff now. I wanted to come and make sure you were okay Naruto Kuen. I heard from my father about the council's decision. Ino stepped forward as well, it's bullshit is what it is. You saved the village, how the hell could they not promote you for that? Naruto sighed, but shrugged, doesn't matter. They decided not to and like my team said, we can always go to the next exam. We were rookies anyway. He was still upset over it, but he wouldn't let that anger cloud his time with these two. Wanna train? Both girls nodded, knowing this was Naruto's preferred method of therapy when thinking or upset. Hinata was already shucking her coat and stretching out to begin their sparring soon, most likely with Naruto first, what are you working on today Naruto-kun? While she could only be so bold with the boy in Ino's presence, she was still working on it. Ino herself was stretching in a much more provocative manner, though Naruto did his best to ignore it, I'm actually working on a way to throw a technique of mine, but I'm coming up blank. It's not the type of thing I can just add a seal to. Ino nodded, what kind of technique? Watching as the boy held up a hand and produced the swirling ball of chakra that was the raisin gan, the girl admired the swirling mass of color. How'd you do that? Naruto dispelled the technique, bouncing from foot to foot as he got ready to get blasted by Hinata, its shape manipulation and raw chakra. Really really dense, could grind through just about anything really. But the second my link breaks with it, the form starts to dissolve. Hands coming up in a ready stance, Hinata smirked and came forward. The spar was on. Ino thought about it while she watched the two go at it, wondering about that for a minute. A technique that was purely chakra, but he wanted to be able to throw it long distance. Playing with her hair, she couldn't think of a way to do that. If he could stay connected to it longer that would help. Bending over and touching her toes, the girl's hair swayed in front of her eyes, what about chakra wire? Naruto deftly avoided a jukin to the shoulder, before trying to jab forward himself in response. A hair to slow, he lost a few tenketsu in his hand for his error, not durable enough, and they don't stick properly to the technique's shell. Hinata was panting as she dodged and weaved between Naruto's attacks. Much more flexible than either of her friends, she bent backwards at the waist to avoid a roundhouse from him, have you tried chakra thread? Chakra thread? Ina was now curious, she hadn't heard of that one. Hinata nodded after completing her backflip and dodged a few times away from her crush. She did take a foot to the gut, for being a hair slower than she should, Sand Ninja use it for their puppets. It allows them to control the puppet from long distances. She had been looking into chakra thread for her own idea for a barrier technique. Though it might be a long time before she could pull it off. Her reserve still rather low. Catching her breath and weaving to the side, she disabled several points in Naruto's outstretched arm. Naruto however was already forcing the Kyuubi's chakra to reopen the points, while he thought about that, chakra thread huh? If he made the raisin gun, and then attached thread to it, would that help? 
It wasn't a puppet, but he also wasn't looking to fully control it, just maintain its shape. And chakra thread would be made up of his chakra, so the raisin gan wouldn't be disrupted by this. That might be the way to go. I'll give that a go, after I learn how to even use the chakra thread technique. Hinata smiled, I've actually been reading up on the ability Naruto Kuen, if you'd like to practice with me? Backing away and stepping out of her stance, she got the feeling this might be more important than getting crushed by the boy in a fight. Naruto agreed, because he wasn't looking forward to Hinata wiping the floor with him, again. Sure, that would help me out a lot. Ino sighed, well while you bookworms read, could you make me a few clones for target practice? I'm trying to get better with Sinbon at the moment. Creating the clones a wide-eyed Naruto sent the two dozen off to listen to the girls every whim, did you get a chance to talk to Shizune-chan? Ino nodded, sure did. Gave me a lot of advice too, really worth it. But now I gotta practice. Filling her hands with the thin weapons, a sadistic grin had all of the clones running for their lives. Behind them, Naruto and Hinata sighed while they watched Ino take off after them. She's insane. I can't disagree with you Naruto-kun. The rest of the evening went by fast for the trio, breaking up and heading to their own homes. Naruto was happy that both Hinata and Ino supported him and wished they could do something about the council, but he told them they weren't their parents. There wasn't much they could do. So after a full dinner and a full night's rest, Naruto was back at it in the morning. Training ground full of clones while he waited for his team, Naruto was ready for a new day. Sakura was the first to arrive, just after the sun really started to rise into the sky. Slightly groggy, she set about starting a chakra control exercise while she waiting for Sasuke and their sensei. Not long later however was a groggy Sasuke who looked between the two before sighing and doing much the same as Sakura, balancing kunai on his chakra points in his hands to increase his control. They both were hard-pressed to keep pace with Naruto, Sakura most of all, but they would be damned if they didn't work just as hard as their friend. Naruto was working on the chakra threat technique, with all of his clones, dead set on finishing this first. Their first business was to attach it to a kunai and then attempt to direct the kunai. Since his goal was to do this, but with a raisin that was the extent of the practice he wanted. He wasn't looking to be a puppeteer after all. Progress was slow but constant, clones dispelling as they made discoveries or breakthroughs. Naruto would freely admit training like this may kill him, but it was so useful to do it this way. He'd have to teach his friends, the Kage Bunshin one day soon. Sakura however finally had a question she had meant to ask a long time ago, Hey Naruto. Yeah, what's up Sakura-chan? As much as you like explosions, why not the exploding clone technique? I'm sure you could learn it, like, right away. A Naruto nodded, sure, but where's the fun in that? It's not artful or interesting at all. Plus, the Kage Bunshin are hard to pick out from me just by looking at their chakra but an exploding clone is recognizable. Would throw off my tactics. Sasuke smirked, your tactics boil down to, blow it up. And if it's still there, blow it up some more. And if it can't be blown up, stab it. Another Naruto was all grins, oh ye of little faith. You have to admit my explosions are great work. Maybe if you want to get yourself, blown up one day. Sakura was pulling no punches this morning. The real Naruto drooped his shoulders, ah come on, you know I wouldn't blow you guys up on purpose. That leaves accidents Naruto. Sakura was also helpful in pointing that out. Kakashi walked in on this scene, a dejected Naruto with a floating kunai fending off Sakura who seemed to be trying to apologize, while Sasuke was performing a handstand on the blunt end of two kunai buried in the dirt. Well, I see you're all as lively as ever. Good morning Kakashi-sensei. Sasuke righted himself, pocketing his weapons, got anything for us today? Kakashi smiled as eventually all of his students assembled before him, we do actually. Routine patrol, across the western border, nothing too crazy, and shouldn't meet up with any tyrants or princesses. Seeing them all not moving the sensei side, you all have your packs already, don't you? Naruto dipped his head, training with Kakashi Sensei 101, always be prepared and be a little paranoid. I don't think paranoid is the word. Sasuke nodded sagely, a paranoid ninja, is a breathing ninja. Except from Kakashi-sensei training, 101. I'm pretty sure I never said that. A paranoid ninja is a prepared ninja who can't be surprised as they are always prepared, even for the situations that one cannot prepare for. Sakura now joined in with a smile. I'm pretty sure that's impossible. Naruto pointed at their sensei, well let's get a move on, we have a border to secure. 
maybe we'll get to take out some bandits, or maybe Rouge Ninja while we're away. The team made their way for the gate, everyone in high spirits, it's not even a full day job, we'll be back tomorrow morning at the latest. Please don't blow anything up while we're out. We're still going to be in land of fire borders. We don't want to set the forest on fire. Naruto linked his hand behind his head, so sword and Rasengan it is. That's great, I can get some practice in. Sakura sighed, I'm pretty sure you just made it worse sensei. Kakashi nodded, I believe you're correct Sakura-chan. Naruto felt a tick build over his eyebrow, I'm right here you know. Poor Naruto, his team started taking bets on just what sort of chaos he would cause. I'm not that bad. Scene change, Naruto was already grumbling as they bounded through the trees between the border of the land of fire and the lands of grass and waterfall. Things had been boring, and true to what Kakashi-sensei said not much was out here for them. Apparently, they were just an emergency fill-in for the last team that had to return for an emergency, and full team would be relieving them in the morning. This left Team 7 to get used to making random patterns and routes for patrols, while keeping an eye on the border itself. The imaginary line between the nations, marked with the occasional seal or physical mark in the trees. Naruto however was grumbling because Sakura was watching him like a hawk, somehow sure he would spontaneously combust if given the chance. Can we at least agree I need a target before blowing something up? Sasuke was hopping along besides a bored Kakashi reading his orange book, you say that, except how many times did you try to blow or Tora? That cat deserved it and everything bad that happens to it now and in the future. Sakura shook her head, I don't think you know the meaning of restraint. Naruto shrugged, should I? Explosions solve all problems. What if I was in debt? There's no debt if there's no one to collect it. Protect kids from bullies? Ever seen exploded bullies pick on little kids? Childbirth? Naruto paused finally, jumping along before finally snapping his finger, low yield explosion in the mom? That'd kill her. But the baby would be out. Problem solved. You can't kill the mom Naruto. You didn't say I couldn't at first, so I'm considering it problem solved. Kakashi was suddenly ahead of them, heads up, foreign team ahead, stay sharp, but don't make any moves just yet. Team assuming formation behind their sensei, the leaf ninja angled right and made a beeline for a small clearing. That they were not far from the land of grass had them concerned, but the team of five ninja that they spotted waiting for them were calm at least. Headband showing them as Earth Ninja, Kakashi, was only a little confused on why they were so far from home. You seem to be lost, friends. Calling down from the trees, Team 7 would not be descending down onto the other group's home advantage. The lead mean, a stern-looking man in his thirties, had his arms crossed as he looked up at the Leaf team, so Kanoha is using little kids to secure the border these days, that's good to know. We'd heard rumors that you've strengthened yourself, but obviously those were just rumors. Naruto leaned out to get a good look at the opposing team, suddenly making ready to spam clones and pull Kubakuri Bocho free with a thought. His hair catching the light, there was a physical tremor that shook through the other team that all of the leaf ninja spotted. It's him. The orange maelstrom. He's just a kid? A kid capable of wiping out villages. Naruto whispered back to his friends, what are they freaking out about? Sasuke shook his head, can't make it out, something about orange. Naruto frowned, why does everyone rag on the greatest color ever, it's a gift from Kami. Sakura sighed, your sanity is a gift from Kami. Kakashi tilted his head, finally as he could hear the other meme much better, well, found what you're looking for. The lead meme pointed a finger at the team, we're leaving for now, but be warned, we better not see any movements near our borders. Let's go, now. Jumping away in the opposite direction, all of the leaf genin were weirded out. What was that about Kakashi-sensei? Naruto was the first to breach the question. Though Sakura and Sasuke were both interested as well. Deciding he had held this back long enough, he reached into a pouch and produced a clean and somewhat newer black book. The latest bingo book. Go to the section of Kanohanin. A rank. He handed the book to Naruto who began to flip through it, Sakura and Sasuke looking over his shoulder. Pages turning past multitudes of entries, he finally found the section for a rankers, and almost immediately found the newest listing that surprised them all. I'm in the bingo book. Sakura pointed at a section, look, there's a picture of you during the Chunin exams, and then a picture of the glass crater. Sasuke sighed, of course someone would put you in the book for that, that is a scary thing, for a single person to be able to do. 
Sasuke also considered that as was something completely insane and that no one should be able to do something like that. Naruto, or anyone else. Naruto started to chuckle, which was sending shivers up and down his friend's spines. Sakura took matters into her own hands and smacked him in the head, what did I do? You were doing the laugh. But, look at this. It's worth it, I'm in the bingo book. That's awesome. Kakashi pointed out the fun part, that also makes you a target now. Sasuke looked at another point, a target with a flea on sight order from anyone from Earth. The chuckle started back up again and Sakura turned to their sensei, is this our fault? Did we create this? Kakashi nodded, it might be, partially our fault. Their sensei directed them back to their patrol, quietly taking the book from Naruto. Remember, yes you have an entry, but if only means you've been recognized as a threat. You are still you, don't get carried away. Naruto nodded, of course. I figure the day I can take you on one-on-one -on -one is the day I'll consider getting cocky. Naruto figured that was a long way away, but he'd keep training and learning all that he could. The team's patrol continued as they had before, with no more encounters from other ninja or bandits, much to their disappointment. Eventually, they decided to camp out on the trees as night began to fall, taking shifts so two of them could sleep, while the other two kept watch of the section of border that they chose to watch over. First watch was Naruto and Sasuke. While both were sure Kakashi was only half asleep, ready to wake and fight at a moment's notice, they appreciated his trust all the same. Considering the darkness and their refusal to light a fire, eating cold ration bars and bottled water, they weren't left with much to do. Sasuke however did have a question, are you still pissed about the council? Like really? Naruto nodded, of course. I'm sure those merchant pricks have been skimming my clan's money and possessions all this time and were just waiting to gloat about it. I guess me doing well in the exams was all they needed to feel like I needed to be put back in my place. Sasuke frowned, for what it's worth, I think you'd made a good chunin. You're my best friend, like a brother to me, you're supposed to think I'd be great. Ass, I'm trying to compliment you. I know, thanks. They lapsed into silence, listening to the forest around them and watching what stars they could between the tree cover. Sasuke. Yeah? You do, want to rebuild your clan one day, right? Sasuke nodded though he was sure Naruto couldn't completely see him, one day, yeah. I still want to defeat my brother first. But it's still my plan. What if, what if the leaf wasn't the best place to do that? More silence. Naruto knew what he was hinting at, but considering the people he was with, they would understand his thought process, he hoped. Sasuke crossed his arms as he thought about that. Could he leave the leaf village, settle his clan somewhere outside of his home, build somewhere new? Doubtful. While a lot had happened to his friend, Kanoha was home to him. Even with all its faults. But for Naruto that wasn't true. The village until recently never really welcomed Naruto. Was still actively stealing from him, could Naruto ever have a real home there? I think. Much like your Nindo, sometimes you can't run away from a problem. You have to fight it, change it. The leaf has its faults, but it's our home. I don't think I could ever leave it. Naruto agreed, somewhat, I know what you mean. It'd feel too much like giving up. But sometimes, perhaps it was best not to fight a losing battle. Retreat, regroup, find a new angle of attack. Naruto wanted to rebuild his clan as well. Doubtful rebuilding Yuzushio would be a possibility. But a new Uzumaki clan? That'd be nice. The night continued, Naruto occasionally sending out clones on patrols of their own deep in his thoughts, with all the silence of the night. He tried to work through them before being relieved by Kakashi-sensei and Sakura, sometime around 2 a.m. There he tied himself to a tree and crashed asleep, the day longer than he thought it'd be, and knowing he'd only get four to five hours worth of sleep before needing to get back up. Sure enough the sun was rising over the horizon, and Kakashi-sensei was waking him, come on Naruto, relief is here, time to go. Shaking the cobwebs of sleep from his mind, Naruto barely took in the sight of a nondescript Chunin team from Kanoha before beginning to pack up his things. Situated in the trees as they were there wasn't much, and he was soon bearing witness to Kakashi exchanging a scroll with the other team leader. Opening it to make sure it was correct, he nodded before directing the team to jump away, finally able to return home. Naruto was happy for the exercise and distraction, because his thoughts were beginning to turn dark. Looking ahead the boy knew he wanted to rebuild his clan, and sure maybe one day he could take a wife or two to help with that, but would Kanoha let him do that? 
They already stole his previous clan's secrets and assets, would they just take anything of his again in the future on flimsy reasoning? Would he even get that far? Sure, he shouldn't be worrying about it now, but he had nothing but time to worry at the moment. That worry was making him come to conclusions he didn't like. Maybe when he got back, he could track down Irika Sensei or Old Man Tucci. They were usually really good about giving out advice. It was around noon when they found themselves back within the village, the genin worn out and ready for bed. Kakashi waved the mission scroll at the team, go on and go home, get some rest. No training tomorrow. We'll meet up in two days. Getting everyone's agreements, Kakashi jumped away. Sakura was already stumbling towards her home, I'm ready for my comfy bed and sleep. Yes yes. Sleep. Sasuke nodded, you good Naruto? You wanna come over for a bit? Sasuke wouldn't normally invite anyone to his house, but his team was steadily becoming very important to him. Naruto had trusted them, so maybe he could start trusting them a bit more. Naruto was smiling as he recognized that, maybe later, I wanna stop and get some ramen. Maybe after, even if I just wanna crash somewhere other than home. Thinking about it, Naruto realized that Sasuke was probably pretty used to being home alone as well. They'd have to start changing that soon. So waving his friend off, the separated for now, promising to meet up later at the Echiha compound. Naruto then made a beeline for his favorite ramen stand. After the last few days that he had had, some good ramen and time with some of his favorite people would make a big difference to his mood. Maybe if he could catch Inoheim and Hinata-chan too. Finally making it, he threw the shade out of the way, hey there old man, I need a dozen bowls on the double. Laughing, Tucci watched as the boy alighted upon a stool with a grin, sure sure, Naruto, coming right up. Humming a tune, Naruto noticed two girls sitting at the end of the bar, both with shaggy red hair, though one had bright red eyes and the other brown. Both were wearing purple jackets, though no headbands that he could see. The brown-eyed girl, taller than him and the other girl turned to face him, what up shithead, need something? Naruto snorted, you've got a mouth on you. Wanna find out what this mouth can do? Taiyuya-san, be nice. I am being nice Karen, don't you worry. Naruto wanted to laugh, but just shook her head and held out a hand, Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet ya. The aforementioned Taiyuya grinned, maybe this wouldn't be so hard, Taiyuya and Karen Uzumaki, nice to meet ya. Seeing the boy's eyes go wide, the grin widened, didn't think we'd ever meet another Uzumaki ever again. Neither did Naruto as his entire focus was now centered on the two next to him. Could they really be Uzumaki? He wasn't sure, but he had time to figure it out, hopefully. Karen leaned forward to look at the boy, wanna swap stories Uzumaki-san? We've been all over the elemental nations looking for family. They would draw him in slowly over time. Orochimaru-sama had given them this task, with no real time limit after all. They'd bring this boy back, no matter what. Omake Hinata could say that she wasn't in the best of moods at the moment, even considering getting a clean bill of health and finally back on full missions again. Training had even picked up, and she was starting to gain some real confidence on her own. But today found her in the library, because Naruto was out on some mission to the other side of the nations. Ino had joined her to try and cheer her up, looking up books on poisons and their sources. Ino was still considering how best to combine her love of plants and flowers with her duties as a ninja, and was coming to the conclusion that it was entirely possible for her to start using low-level paralysis-based Sinban soon. She'd have to work up her own immunity to the drugs herself, but that would be a daily thing. Maybe she could mess up and have Naruto carry her around one day? Hmm, plans and schemes. You look like you're thinking about something perverted. Hinata wasn't actively looking up from her current scroll, but Ino could bet that her Byakugan was active. Just wondering what a paralyzed Naruto would be like. Really the opposite of her thoughts, but if it got a rise out of Hinata, all the better. Only you would think paralyzing him would be worth it. I'm sure I'll have his attention, without the use of drugs. We're ninja, we play rough. And dirty. While Hanada had been acting strange ever since Naruto had figured out who his parents were, the rivalry between the girls seemed to be just as strong as ever on the surface. But then there was a feeling. Ino and Hanada looked up at the same time, a shiver, going down their backs. Like someone was walking on the graves. Or more likely, staking a claim on the young man they were in love with. My skank senses are tingling. Ino's hand was twitching toward her new Sanban. Some hussy is horning in on our Naruto Kuen. Hands glowing, the Hyuga air locked eyes with the blonde. Truce? 
truce. No one lays a hand on him until we do. Pact made, they both would find information on just who they had gone to protect on this mission. There was no way they were letting some random get ahead of them in their war for Naruto's heart. Somewhere far away, Koyaki felt the urge to grin and mentally score herself a point. Seeing the laughing but stunned Naruto holding a hand to his cheek, she shrugged it off. Couldn't be that important. Chapter 16 Naruto had a mixture of emotions all at once and he wasn't entirely sure which to pick. Settling for chuckling and leaning back as his first bowl of ramen was placed in front of him, Naruto nodded and scooting over a bit closer to them. He left two stools between them as a respectful distance, but he didn't want to have to yell to be heard. I wish I had some cool stories I could give ya, but I've been here all my life. Karen nodded anyway while she waved his concerns away with a hand, I was only here for the Chunin exams before my team was wiped out, so that's okay. That one of his clones had saved her during the exam with a wink and a wave, but she got the feeling he didn't remember that. She hadn't even told Tayuya that little piece of information, but the older girl was much more loyal to Orochimaru than her. At least she seemed like it. Naruto looked up with surprise, you were in the exams? But you're not wearing a headband anymore. Karen nodded, we failed, so we were tossed out, considered failures. More like her town had been destroyed and she was left alone, but close enough. Tayuya stepped in for a moment, what about you blondie, how'd you do in the exams? She knew, but she also knew poking subjects close to Orochimaru might help them. Mood dimmed only briefly, the perpetually happy boy waved his chopsticks in the air, made it all the way to the finals actually before the invasion broke out. Finishing his first bowl and handing it over to receive another, the blonde motioned to Tayuya, what's life like for the Uzumaki outside of Kanoha? Tayuya scoffed, on the run a lot. Just about every village would give anything to have us. I'm not so in demand since I was more branch family, but Karen here is main line. So she's got all the perks, extended lifespan, denser chakra, and even managed to manifest a chain once. Tayuya-san, we aren't supposed to talk about that outside. The older girl shrugged, it's just us here, and he's an Uzumaki, so he knows all this already. And he seems to know and trust this ramen guy, so I'm not too worried. Though it wouldn't matter, since they didn't plan on being here long. It would allow them to sow some trust between them. Naruto was upset mentally. Outside the village it didn't sound like things were much better for his broken-up clan. Everyone seemed to want a piece of them. I'm sorry, it sounds like it's been rough out there. Karen sighed as she looked down into her own bowl of noodles, it has been, difficult. Memories of her mother flashed in her mind before she shook them free. Now wasn't the time, but we at least hope that with another Uzumaki here, we should be a little safer for a while. At least until we have to go. Naruto shrugged, don't know about that. The council's interference and theft still fresh in his mind, the boy's mood darkened further. Tayuya saw that and pounced on it, sounds like things aren't great here either. Wanna talk it out, I always like to vent and it helps. Karen sighed, you just like being vulgar, Tayuya-san. Like I said, it helps. Naruto again downed another bowl of noodles, wish it was something I could talk about, but honestly I can't. You aren't leaf mean and it's a village thing. Turning to look at the girls with his mismatched eyes, the boy softened a little and offered them a smile, thanks for offering though. Karen nudged Tayuya under the bar, sensing higher chakra signatures heading their way. Tayuya got the message and finished her own bowl, while Blondie, will be in town for a few days at least. If you want to hang out, talk, trade some stories, just come find us. Giving him the hotel name and their room number, both redheads excused themselves and left with a wave. This left Naruto alone to puzzle out the odds. What were the chances two other Uzumaki happened to show up in the leaf, now, of all times? Thinking it over and coming up blank, Naruto made plans that tomorrow he would visit Tsunade in the morning. She might be able to help him, because besides their word, he really had no concrete proof they were Uzumaki. Sure, they had the traits, but that was easy enough to fool. And with his luck lately of finding people to trust, well, it was better to be paranoid Kakashi said. Somewhere a silver-haired ninja sneezed. As Naruto was getting into his fourth bowl of ramen, he heard the door shades moved aside again. Behind him a down-looking Hinata and a worried Ino made their way inside. Greeting the proprietor Ino took up her seat on Naruto's left, while Hinata took a seat on his right. Taking notice of two of his favorite people, Naruto felt his mood finally improve, Hinata-chan, Inoheim, what's up? Ino sighed, motioning to the down girl who unconsciously was leaning on Naruto for comfort, 
The Hubic Council just decided she would not become the heir of the Hubic clan, instead it'll be her sister. While they had gotten closer over these last few months, it was only recently that the shorter girl clued her into some of the clan politics within her clan. None of it was pretty, and Ino was pretty happy her own clan wasn't anything like that. Naruto frowned and turned back to the upset girl, do we need to head back over there and explode some idiots? It'd be fun. Not thinking about her response really, she said what instantly came into her tired mind. That's all I need to hear. Let's go. Hold it. Freezing Naruto in place, Ino held up a hand and sighed, look, I know you've just gone through some stuff with the council, but don't go painting an even bigger target on your back. But, explosions? They can't fix everything. You just haven't used enough yet. Both froze as they saw Hanada's shoulders shaking, worried that they had set the girl off and she had begun crying. Naruto for sure was at a loss, as the girl was leaning into him, I I, I am sorry Hanada-chan. Tell me what you want and we'll make it happen. On my honor. Neither were prepared for the girl to lean back and let loose laughter. Hanada needed this right here. Being with her closest friends and dealing with their antics. Yes, the clan council stripped her of her status, but she was still a ninja of the leaf and protected. She still could see the boy she was in love with, and she could still train and grow into a successful kunoichi if she desired. Calming down and wiping a tear away from her eye, the girl nodded to her friends, thank you. I needed that. Naruto was completely unsure of just what they did, though he had the presence of mind to at least smile and nod, anything for you Hinata-chan. Ino however felt the need to step in, teasing now necessary, oh just Hinata? What about me? Your precious Enoheim? Naruto turned back to her, mild panic on his face, well of course you too Enoheim, I'd do anything for you too. Hinata decided she needed the fun still as well, but Naruto kuen, you'd abandon me? Putting on her best watery eyes, she was rewarded with an even more desperate boy. WWW all what no? I wouldn't abandon you. Ino now leaned forward, oh so I'm just yesterday's lunch then? Taking pity on the boy, I am stepped forward and placed the girl's usual orders down in front of them, don't listen to them Naruto, they're having fun with you. Facing first Hinata and then Ino, seeing the odd sparkle in their eyes, Naruto sighed and went back to his noodles, that wasn't very nice. Hinata giggled, but it was fun Naruto kuen. Ino nodded, plus it cheered up Hinata chan, so that's a win win to me. Diving into his next bowl with a smile, Naruto finally relaxed properly. Sure, he was pissed about the council and what they did. And yes, he wanted to get back at them in some way. But right now, he wasn't worried about any of it because he had his friends and his adoptive family too. That was more than enough for right now. Scene change, the next morning found a smiling and refreshed Naruto bounding his way to the Hokage Tower. While he knew Tsunade wouldn't be up this early, at least not without a lot of coffee, Shizun would be. She would be more likely to help him without an argument as well, so that was a plus. Quickly making his way inside and bounding up the stairs, he was rewarded with said woman arranging her desk and getting ready for the day. Tauntin while milling about on the floor around the desk, clearly already bored. Morning Nechan, ready for today? Shizun shook her head, you know Tsunade-sama, it's always a hassle to wake her up, I'm already tired. Chuckling, the older woman turned to him fully, how can I help you Naruto-kun? Having spent all night trying to figure out how to word this, Naruto went for vague, if you had distant family, but wanted to make sure, could you compare chakra or maybe a blood test? Shizun thought it over before snapping her fingers, oh, we have blood seal paper on hand for that. What's that? Shizun rifled around in a bag at the foot of her desk before pulling several paper sticks free, essentially they're used for multiple reasons, usually the biggest is paternity testing and the like. Seeing the slightly confused look on Naruto's face, Shizun handed the sticks over, essentially you put some of your blood on one side, and the other person's blood on the other, and the seal will write out your relation in the middle. If there's no match, the stick will turn black. Not even worried why the boy would need this as it was most likely for either a prank or the like and she was completely willing to help him out with those recently, the girl nodded, don't worry about those, I have more than enough. Not looking this gift horse in the mouth, Naruto stashed the sticks in his pocket, thanks Nechan. I guess then I'll get on the road, gotta get to training and causing chaos. Not too much I hope. I understand you're still upset, but making trouble will only give the council more ammunition against you. Watching Naruto pause, the woman leaned against the desk, something wrong? Naruto turned back to her with an unreadable expression before shaking his head, nah, it's nothing. 
See you later, Nichon. Grinning and running off, Shizun put the encounter out of her mind. Whatever prank he had in store for the council members, they had it coming. Naruto, however, had sealed the test sticks away into a scroll for safekeeping for now, making his way to a training ground for the morning. It was early, so he figured he would give them some time and maybe try to find them a little after lunchtime. With any luck, he'd have the afternoon to find them, perform the tests, and then figure out what he was going to do. Alighting in the training ground and not feeling any of his teammates there, he filled the clearing with clones and they were off to their training. Today was chakra thread practice and Razengan throwing. Now that he could make a few meters of the stuff, it was down to getting throwing practice in. Heh, he'd be grinding people into dust in no time with this. Deciding he needed the physical training himself, he removed his jacket and shirt to inspect his own personal seals. He had almost fully forgotten about his waiting seals. He sure hadn't checked them in a long time, not that he had felt the need. Running a hand over the command seal he released them and bounced in place for a moment. That's, scary. He felt entirely to light. Perhaps he had forgotten about them for much longer than he should have. Deciding that indeed today should be a physical practice day, he also vowed not to reapply the seals for a long while or at least until he could figure out how not to forget about them. Taking an experimental dash around the training grounds and nearly smashing into a tree, he nodded to himself that yes, that was a bad idea. No more training seals. Resolving his morning to shitty workouts, he got to work readjusting his body. By noon he was tired, sweaty, and bruised, but just about completely adjusted to his new speed. Having removed the seals from himself completely so he wouldn't be tempted to use them again for a while, he instead focused on a different bit of training for the moment. With a bit of mental focus, he felt the seal within his home. Molding the chakra, he was gone and reappeared in his apartment. Yes. Chakra usage was way down already, meaning his tweaking the seals was paying off. Running to his room so he could shower and change into fresh clothes, the blonde was soon back at his door and headed in the direction of the hotel Tayuya and Karen said they were staying in. Hopefully they were there and not out exploring the village some more. Jumping over a building and catching sight of the hotel, he also saw the shock of red hair walking away from it. Grinning the boy changed direction slightly and dropped down to ground level, Tayuya-san, Karen-san. Waving a hand over his head, both girls turned to see him. Yo blondie. Good afternoon Naruto-san. Naruto jogged up to them and joined them in their walk, what are you both up to today? Tayuya shrugged with her hands in her pockets, wanted to see the sights, maybe check out the Hokage Monument. No time with your team today? Naruto shook his head, we actually just got back from a mission, so we have a few days off. He looked them over before nodding, how about I show you around, hit the monument and the rest of the sights. Both girls agreeing, they wandered off to see the village from a tourist's perspective. Naruto tried his best to be upbeat and not distracted, showing off the market district and eventually, the Hokage Tower. He couldn't show off training grounds or the academy to random people, but the nature and beauty of the village were fair game. Eventually, however they found their way to the top of the Hokage Monument, Naruto leading the way to his personal favorite, the fourth's head. Funny that his favorite place was a carving of his dad's face. If only he had known sooner, another sore point against the village elders. Breaking through the tree cover, Naruto wasn't fully prepared to see Hinata of all people sitting there looking out over the village. Sun beginning to lower in the sky, still afternoon and not quite evening, the boy jogged ahead of his potential clanmates. Hey Hinata-chan, you alright? The downtrodden girl looked back at her crush, smiling though it didn't seem to be real. Not really. Who are your friends Naruto-kun? Hinata noticed their bright red hair, but also lack of headbands. Civilians then most likely. Why would Naruto be hanging around with them? Maybe a mission? Naruto chuckled, turning back to the possible Uzumakis, actually, these are Uzumaki Karen and Tayuya. They're visiting the village for a little while. Frowning and considering things, Hinata didn't want her friend to be taken advantage of by someone looking to use his fame. Are you sure they're Uzumaki? Hey, we're right here you know, that's rude. Tayuya had no qualms about speaking up when she felt like she was being slighted. Karen however, held up a hand. It is reasonable to doubt us, she hasn't met us before now. And it's not like we can prove it. Being reminded of his earlier errand before he had met up with the girls, Naruto pulled out a scroll and unsealed the blood comparison seals. Uh, actually, we can prove it. If you wouldn't mind? He wanted to believe. 
Things had been so shitty recently that he needed some good right now. Learning he had living family would do a lot more towards cheering him up after losing all the clan scrolls. I put a drop of my blood on one end and then you put some blood on the other. Then it tells us our relation in the middle. Tayuya scoffed, you could just believe us. Karen shook her head and stepped forward, we're in a ninja village Tayuya-san, secrets are pretty par the course. Turning to the blonde, Karen bowed slightly, I won't mind at all. It'd be good to know for sure we're related. It's nice to know we have family out here. It had been nice today, to spend time with the blonde. He seemed to have an awareness about himself that extended past just battle. She could admit to herself that she had a slight crush on him from when he saved her, but his character really did help a lot. He was kind, but not a pushover. Naruto bit his thumb and wiped in on one end of a paper seal, okay. Here's the first one then. He held it out, trying not to show too much anticipation. And as Karen pulled out a small carving knife to make a slit in her thumb, he had to work not to hold his breath as her thumb pressed into the other end of the seal. Seeing the seal pull the blood into itself before glowing red, they watched for a moment before the seal wrote out that they matched. Second cousins huh, you really are main branch, aren't you? Tayuya was looking over Karen's shoulder with curiosity. While she didn't care much about the relation, something in her did feel relieved that they were in fact some type of family. Grinning Naruto put that seal away, placing his still slightly bloody thumb on a new seal while Hanada stood next to him, curious herself, you ready Tayuya-chan? Just Tayuya squirt, cut the chan shit. Not able to really describe her feelings at the moment, Tayuya took the offered knife from Karen and slit her own thumb. Pressing it quickly to the paper to get this over with, they went through the same process. After a moment, the same red characters bled out to describe them as second cousins once removed. Huh, look at that. Maybe not main branch, but it was confirmation that they were concretely related. Looking down at the seals, Naruto took a deep breath. Still not knowing these girls really well, he did however, have Hinata there with him. Spinning and picking the girl up in a hug, he laughed loudly as he spun her around, I have family Hinata-chan. Elated for a reason he really couldn't put into words fully, he knew at least that he was happy. Karen watched as the boy spun his friend around, the girl blushing up a storm but smiling all the same, they're close. Tayuya nodded, we could use that. Karen shook her head, bad idea. Karen however, was still of the mind that she might have to ditch Tayuya completely. She wasn't loyal to Orochimaru and the man had already attempted to experiment on her once. That she found a family member out here was a miracle. If he was as genuine as he seemed, she'd follow him anywhere. Speaking up, Karen nodded to Hinata, she seems important to you. This your girlfriend? Naruto put down his friend with a blush, ah, this is Hinata-chan. One of my best friends and a badass kunoichi. If you ever need someone to really help you out in a pinch, this is your girl. Boasting about his friends was always easy. Hinata herself just smiled and shook her head, I apologize for not being so trusting. Tayuya waved it off, you're ninja, we get it. There was no reason for anyone to trust each other in this profession. Look at them, they were here to convince Naruto to leave the village. Or bring a piece of him back with them. One or the other. It bothered her somewhat that after her hard work and training to become one of his guardians Orochimaru pretty much downgraded her to broodmare if needed. Then again, it was better than being one of his test subjects. Naruto, however, was turning to look out over the village, the sun dropping further in the sky. You know, you two asked me what things were like in this village. Thinking it over and realizing that besides the QB, he didn't need to censor much of his personal story. And now that he knew they were family, he felt better about sharing it, village be damned at the moment. Wanna hear my story? Following Naruto, as he sat down on the grassy head of the fourth, Hinata leaned close, is this wise? Naruto shrugged, is anything I do wise? Hinata smiled but shook her head, you are you. Point. Karen didn't hesitate, coming and sitting on his other side, I'd like to hear all about it. I'll share about the crazy stuff I've been through. She would too, though some of it she might have to wait until Tayuya went to sleep and the smaller girl hunted the boy Uzumaki down. Tayuya sighed and sat on the other side of Karen, I am curious I guess. She sort of was at that. Kanoha gave the impression as a village where no one suffered and Naruto's demeanor fed that mindset. Sure he had mentioned that things weren't that great here, but how bad it can be. Naruto however started to dive into his memories, not noticing his hand covering Hinata's for mental support and sending the girl blushing, so, I was an orphan and on the streets early. 
from there he talked about his early life. Scrounging for food and clothes, the loneliness, some beatings. Then the academy and the visits from the Hokage. Trying to learn and make friends, betrayals and lies from multiple adults. His hard-fought rise from no name to something of a local legend in terms of pranking and outrunning Umbo. He spoke of finally gaining some real recognition from his first teacher that gave a damn about him. Then his team and sensei, their bonding and missions together. His first kill, nearly dying saving his friend, gaining the respect of foreign ninja and a country. Then the shitstorm that was his life since then. The Chunin exams, Orochimaru, the invasion. Meeting his godfather and the council. He left out sensitive bits about the village or anything related to defense, but his life was there before the other two. They were family, and naive though the thought may be, he didn't feel the need to lie to them. Some part of him desperate to have someone actually care about him without some other motive involved. Yes, he knew Hanada-chan and Enoheim cared. His team would as well. But that was four maybe five people tops, in a village of thousands. He was finding lately, his connections were more on a select few special people instead of the village on a whole. Tayuya and Karen were quiet through it all, watching the sun begin to truly set as Naruto told his story. Both were lost in their thoughts as they listened for their own reasons. Karen, because much like herself and her mother, it sounded like Kanoha was using Naruto and his ability however they could. She imagined a world where maybe her mother had ended up here, instead of Kusa. Would they have taken Naruto in? Would they be more like siblings now, or more likely, engaged to rebuild the clan? It was a horrid thought to think that through someone else's machinations that they wouldn't get to have that life. At least they hadn't gotten to in the past. Deciding in her heart right then that she would be staying with him, she'd make up for lost time. Leaning forward, she wasn't even bothered by the attention the pale-eyed girl gave Naruto. He was a mainline descendant like her, so if he did have a goal of rebuilding the clan, he'd need more than one wife, consort, girlfriend. She could live with that. Tayuya surprised them all by speaking up. The normally brash girl was quiet but her gaze was firm as she looked out over the orange-tinted village, I've been alone for as long as I can remember. Don't remember my parents, my family, anyone. I've had to fight for everything I have, every breath, until now. Sometimes I wondered dot why was I cursed to be born in Uzumaki? What benefit did we have in this world? Still refusing to turn and look the boy in the eye, she could have this moment of truth with them all before coming back to reality and getting back to the mission, it's truly nice. Not to meet some lying shithead looking to use the Uzumaki name. Maybe, in another life, we would have met sooner. Had a better life. Karen looked up to Tayuya with some awe, realizing that the older girl wasn't all that loyal to Orochimaru either, whether she said so or not. She could work with this, though she'd have to talk to her first, just in case. I never saw being an Uzumaki as a curse, though this special blood running through my veins is the reason my mother is dead. Feeling the others look at her, the girl leaned back on her hands as she looked up at the sky, my mom and I ended up in Kusa. In order to stay, my mom had to agree to healing the village ninja, and, other, things. Eventually there was a battle, she was overworked and was pushed over her limit. She died healing others, while I was left alone. The village elder decided I was going to take her place, or be tossed out on my own. So I did. I learned, I trained, I fought. And I gave my blood to heal others in the hope that one day things would get better. Like you both, I can say things did not getting better. Looking over now to a wide-eyed Naruto, Karen let some more truth slip past her lips, then you came. A horde of orange ninja. One taking a moment to save a dumb red head from a bear. I had almost accepted dying. But you smiled at me and gave me a second chance. Looking back up to the darkening sky, Karen finally let silent tears fall down her cheeks, thank you, for saving me. Naruto made the decision to look away from the girl and her tears, giving her a moment, for what it's worth, I'm glad you're here, Karen-chan, folding a knee and resting an arm on it, his gaze over the village was not completely kind at the moment. This world seemed to want to do its best to use them up, and then toss them aside when they were broken. He had wanted to fight against it, to rage against this social machine. But doing it alone was draining. He needed friends, allies. Like his earlier thought however, he was finding that list short. Hinata herself didn't want to intrude, this feeling like a family matter, but the warmth of Naruto's hand opened her mouth for her. You know. 
waiting for a moment to hear some type of condemnation from them and not getting it, the Hubick continued, when I was dropped as clan heir, I thought for sure I would finally be free from obligations, from the scrutiny. Instead, I found it to be the opposite. Even worse actually. Not only does my father see fit to judge and berate me at every turn, but the clan council sees me as no more than breed stock now. My sister has no respect for me, my cousin seems to have forced himself to be kind to me, but I know what they all think of me truly. Looking on it now, our village seems to be rotting from several places at once. The village council takes what it wants, the clans take what they want. But what about us? What of the ninja who give their lives to try to better the village as a whole? Why is what happened to the Uzumaki allowed to pass? The Echiha? It's all so. Turning to her friend, she offered him a watery smile, so broken. Naruto wanted to tell her they'd fix it. He wanted to say they'd make it better. Right now, he couldn't though, and he had said he wouldn't lie to his friends. What do you do with a broken system? Normally he'd say fight it, fix it. That wasn't on his mind at the moment. Tayuya, however, was easy to say his thoughts, blow it up. Burn it to the ground. Start over. This world does nothing but take from us. Why is it so wrong that we take something back? Karen was still looking up at the sky, beginning to see some stars now, where does it stop? Can it stop? Naruto sighed, I don't know. For now I'm happy however. I got to meet and share my life with two members of my clan, my family that I didn't know about. That's a gift I didn't know I'd get to have. Turning to look at the two girls, Naruto bowed his head slightly, I'm glad to have met you both. I'm sorry life seems to want to keep kicking us around. Tayuya was eager to wave him off, even if she was touched, nothing you could do squirt. Not like we can rebuild Yuzu or some shit. That place had been torched and reduced to rubble. Orochimaru had taken her once, to show her the futility of hopeful thoughts. Karen nodded to him with a smile, you'd make a good clan head, I think. In another world, I'd like to think that maybe the Uzumaki didn't get wiped out, that maybe we'd be friends. Naruto nodded, maybe on a team even. Naruto gripped the girl's hand next to him, though I don't know if I could give up knowing Hinataheim and Inoheim. Sitting in silence for a while, enjoying the peace and watching the village come to life in the night time. They all in their own way either admired the stars or just the company. For children feeling abandoned by their village, clans, leaders, or some combination of it all. They shared a moment of unity in the cooling night. Eventually, Tayuya motioned for Karen to rise, who did so reluctantly. Naruto and Hinata looked over to watch them, though Tayuya motioned for them to stay. We gotta go, but uh. We'll be here another day or so. Catch you tomorrow? Naruto nodded, sure thing, touch on. Brat. A little less irritated, the female pair waved and made their way back down the mountain and left Naruto and Hinata alone. Relaxing completely, Hinata leaned into the boy, they're nicer than I thought they'd be. I don't know if I'd turn out as well with the lives they had lived. Naruto nodded, you're stronger than you think, me and Inoheim tell you that all the time. Silence descended on them again, Hinata thinking something dark and for once feeling confident enough to speak it. Do you think, do you think you could leave the village? Shocked by the question, Naruto looked down at the girl currently hiding her eyes behind her bangs, what? I dot besides my team, you and Ino are really all that links me to the village. If I didn't have you. She couldn't look at him though, scared to see the disgust and rejection she was sure was in his eyes. You have even less, and now two members of your clan are here. What's stopping you from leaving the village with them? I for sure wouldn't leave without you and Enoheim. What if we went with you? Silence dropped around them. That was the question of the night. Naruto, however, knew he couldn't answer that at all. He had never even dared to think about it, dared to even dream about it. He had always wanted to keep fighting, keep pushing forward. That included gaining the village's respect, the respect of his fellow ninja. Become Hokage and protect everyone. What if their respect wasn't something he could ever gain? What if they always saw him as nothing but a tool? What if one day when he grew old and maybe befriended even the fuzzball in his gut, the council decided to rip it out and stuff it in one of his kids to keep their weapon fresh? I'm sorry. I'm sure you hate me for even saying that. I dash I think I would. Naruto couldn't look at her either in his own shame, but his hand enclosed around her own, I think. If something happened, pushed one of us over the edge. I could leave. I don't know if I could blow the village apart, there are innocent people here. But the council? 
Some of the clans? Yeah, some part of me could leave. They sat in silence from then on. They both knew they couldn't leave. Not now, too many obligations and ties held them here. They still had some hope that things could get better, improve. That maybe such a drastic measure wouldn't be needed. Eventually, Naruto hugged the girl and stood, offering her his hand, I'm gonna see if I can convince Tayuya and Karen to stay in the leaf. Hinata took his hand, letting him pull her to her feet, do you think that's wise? She wouldn't question if he could do it. If he decided it was going to happen, it would happen. Naruto shook his head, probably not, Kanoha will want to use them too. I'll fight and protect them as much as I can. And well, with the council being the way it is, I'm not above a little threatening now. And he wasn't. He meant it that he wouldn't blow up the village, but the council didn't know that. Which meant creative threats were allowed. Come on, let's head out and get something to eat, it's almost dinner time. Taking the lead, Hinata's warm hand still in his own, he felt lighter than he had in probably a week. Scene change, the next morning around the same time Naruto had met up with Tayuya and Karen before, he was dropping into the street and meeting them again. He had one day before he had to start team training and missions back up. That meant he had to get things done today. So thinking it and now focused, he had a plan in mind. Waving to a smiling Karen and a apathetic Tayuya, they marched off towards the city with no real destination in mind, though Naruto was subtly trying to divert them to his apartment. First, however, he needed to open that conversation. So, you're gonna leave soon? Smooth Naruto, real smooth. Tayuya nodded, have to, not enough money to stay. Gotta go find some work and keep moving. Not a complete lie, but not the truth either. While she had slipped up yesterday, she would make sure to stick to the plan today. There was no reason to share her past with him or Karen. The sound village was for the strong, the weak got eaten. Well what if, you had a place to stay, that you didn't have to pay for? Tayuya crossed her arms under her modest bust, we aren't women of the night so we sure as hell aren't going to find something that nice. Blushing Naruto shook his hands back and forth, no no. Nothing like that. Looking away and taking a calming breath, he got on with it, what if, you stayed with me? Seeing both girls pause and just stare at him, he was quick to start defending himself and stave off pervert accusations. I wouldn't ask you to do anything at all, and I'll be better about keeping it clean and what not. You can have my room. I just. I don't have much, but I don't like the idea of you both going back out into the world alone like that. If I have some power to do anything, let it be to protect what's precious to me. Looking at them directly, the boy smiled, your family. I don't know if that means anything, but that's special. I've never had that before. Karen was happy as this fell in line with her decision to stay by his side, so she would agree in a heartbeat. I would love to stay, though I'll have to see your apartment first. Tayuya wanted to give at least the pretense of fighting it, but with Karen so gung-ho about it, she couldn't muster up much energy to do so. That's a lot to ask of two girls you really don't know. A token resistance at least. Naruto shrugged, we're Uzumaki, do we need any other proof than that? At the least, we know each other's pain and they did in one form or another. Sighing and pretending to really think it over, Tayuya scrubbed a hand through her hair. He really was just so earnest, ugh all right. Let's go see this shithole. Come on, at least see it first, before you call my place a shithole. It's a man's house, it's bound to be a shithole. Says you, I can clean. Can and do are two different things. Karen tried to moderate, come on you two, we're supposed to be bonding, this is a happy thing, happy. We are bonding. Tayuya reached over and ruffled Karen's hair. She could pretend for a little while. Now that they were secured to be close to him, they'd have plenty of time. So she could have a family, if only for a bit. Naruto was grinning, I'm a pretty brash guy, so if I'm teasing you it usually means I care. It was his way with his team, and Enoheim and Hinataheim. Leading the girls to his apartment building, and then up the stairs to his place. He pointed out the rickety stairs not to trust and several sections of floor not to step on. So most of the building is empty, so noise won't ever be a problem. It was mostly the lower floors that had some people, but the upper floors were all empty and his apartment was right at the top. Fishing out his key and unlocking the door, Naruto led the way inside, and this is home sweet home. Waving them in. Karen and Tayuya gazed upon his kingdom. It's clean. Karen snorted at Tayuya's surprise. I said I cleaned after myself. 
Yeah but, you're a guy, guys lie about that stuff all the time. Walking in and taking a tour, she did note that the refrigerator was pretty empty. Probably owing to the fact that the guy was gone a lot and didn't shop. Gonna have to fix this. Karen was looking over his plants, all looking healthy, what's that? No food. Yeah, I'm usually pretty busy, so I just shop daily or go out. He could cook, but he'd just been in and out of the village recently. Hadn't had a chance to restock yet. Karen shrugged, we can take care of stuff like that. If you are going to charge us to stay, the least we can do is help out. Tayuya frowned, we're gonna have to do something about money. Guess I could get a job, though I don't want to use the Uzumaki name. We're supposed to be on a low profile. Naruto shook his head, don't worry about money. I make a lot with missions, and I still have some money from bounties I received a while ago. Since I don't go out or do anything, I do nothing but save. Sure he spent some money on bomb supplies, but ultimately, he still had cash to spare. Turning to the girls who were wandering around his living room, he spread his arms wide, consider this your home. I know it isn't a clan compound or anything. But, it's home. Home. That was a word Karen never thought she'd be able to really ascribe to anywhere anymore. Nodding, she set about exploring further. Tayuya unintentionally was thinking much the same as Karen. Sound was never home, just as much a prison as it was hell. This could be something else. Again she had to remind herself that this was just pretend. Nothing serious. We have some money saved up, so we can at least help stock up on food and supplies. We'll need to go back to the hotel and get our bags. Naruto nodded, I'll clear out my room, like I said, you both can share it. I'm gonna take a shower, but I should be done before you get back. If not, feel free to start moving in. Getting both girls to nod and giving them a spare key, he watched them go before creating and tasking several clones to empty out his room and place things strategically around the living room. He could seal away his clothes for now, buy a dresser to shove in a corner later. Grinning the boy jumped in the air in joy. He had honest to Kami family living with him. Bounding off to jump in the shower, grabbing pants and a towel, he reminded the clones to disperse themselves when they were finished with their tasks. Half an hour later found Karen and Tayuya back at the apartment. Tayuya putting clothes away in the bedroom while Karen was filling the fridge with their market hall. They couldn't bother Naruto since they heard the shower, but they could entertain themselves in the meantime. As Tayuya came out, biker shorts on and a snug black tank top, she was closest to hear a knock at the door. Did he say anything about visitors? Karen shook her head, don't think so, but he does have some friends. Maybe it's one of them? Their chakra feels gen and level, maybe tune in. It'd fit. Shrugging and going to answer the door, the taller Tayuya opened the door to see Hinata and some other blonde she hadn't met before, uh, yo. What did you want? You, who the hell are you? Why was there some scantily dressed older girl answering Naruto's door? Ino was caught off guard. Ino did not do well caught off guard. Wouldn't you like to know Blondie? Why yes, yes I would you dash Hanada aside and stepped forward, bowing lightly, good afternoon Tayuya-san. I didn't know you would be with Naruto Kuen today. Can we come in? Tayuya turned and headed back inside, sure sure. And yeah, we were going to hang out before we left, but plans have changed. Ina was looking between the taller red head and Hanada. She wasn't freaking out about this hussy in their crush's house, so that was hopefully a good sign. Uh, who is this Hanada-chan? Hanada smiled as she closed the door and walked behind Tayuya, this is Tayuya Uzumaki. She and Karen are two Uzumaki who found their way to Kanoha. Oh the look on Ino's face was priceless. Uzumaki? As in clan members of Naruto's clan? There are more of them? Well that was certainly news, that meant potentially Naruto was a clan head. It also meant he had family. That's amazing. From the kitchen, Karen stepped out, you're telling us. We thought we'd never find another Uzumaki ever. Holding out a hand to the blonde who took it with a shake, Karen smiled, Karen, nice to meet you. Ino nodded to both of the other red heads, must be a family trait, Ino Yamanaka. Floweriest and beauty of a kunoichi at your service. Tayuya could admit that she seemed to at least take the job somewhat seriously, not a vapid rail thin airhead, I'm Tayuya. Floweriest, huh? Know anyone looking for some hired civilian help? She'd have to keep up appearances for now Ino put a finger to her chin and Karen tried to herd them all to the living room. Sitting on one of the couches herself. 
Eno and Hinata sat together on the longer couch, I can ask around. My parents' shop could use a helping hand I think. At least these girls weren't going to mooch off of Naruto while they were here. Where are you staying, I can find somewhere close by it. Tayuya motioned around them, Naruto offered his place, so we're staying here. That was news to both of the younger leaf girls, staying with Naruto? Hinata had a mild blush on her face. They were clanmates sure, but like hers, there were plenty of clans who weren't bothered about keeping blood pure. Karen nodded, he was very adamant about it. None of them heard the shower turn off. Ino herself sighed, that sounds like him, always thinking of others. She'd had to grill the little explosion junkie later. Not hearing the conversation and walking out with a towel around his neck, Naruto was only dressed in some black sweatpants that were slightly loose. Upper body on display and showing off that in fact sword training along with physical conditioning was doing wonders for his physique. All the girls present were blushing as he froze in place. What were Ino and Hinata doing here? Uh, hey everyone. Why was everyone else's eyes glinting? Abs. Eno's voice, cut clear through everyone else's thoughts. Eyes focused solely on the V-shape of Naruto's core, leading downward. Why was she suddenly so hot? We're gonna live with that? Sign me up full time. Tayuya started cackling as Karen pounded on her arm. We're supposed to be nice, nice. Don't get all weird day one. Hinata however was much as Eno, however her blush finally reached nuclear level and she passed out. Naruto of course saw this, Ak, Hinata. Stay with us. You okay, hey? Rushing to try and shake her awake, he missed the silly smile on her face. Eno sighed and leaned back, oh we're so going to have to visit often. No way we're missing out on this. Still laughing Tayuya appreciated the sight of Naruto's toned back, you know, I might want to take back what I said about the women of the night comment. You look worth it. Cackling as Karen blushed even harder, she took pride in the dark look Eno tossed her way. So the little blonde was into the Uzumaki blonde. Good info to have. Naruto, however, was still trying to wake up Hinata. Recent drama aside, this wasn't a bad day in the end. Chapter 17 A new day was dawning on Kanahigakur, the market was beginning to open up, civilians were rising and preparing themselves while ninja young and old were either coming home for rest or readying themselves for missions. In one particular apartment however, it was as if a bomb had gone off. Naruto's home looked as if someone had the wildest party the previous night, which it sort of had. Naruto had never entertained people in his apartment before and suddenly stuck with not just two but four women, he kind of overdid it. And as he groggily came back to the land of the conscious, he frowned as he recognized a particular perverted giggle. Trying and failing to move for some reason, he could only turn to find his mentor at the window with his little book in his hand. Jiraiya had a slight nosebleed as he wrote page after page of notes. Naruto was stuck on the couch, Hinata laying against him on one side while Ino took the other. Both apparently were cuddlers, hanging tightly onto his arms in their sleep. Hinata was quiet at least, but the blonde Yamanaka was snoring up a storm and drooling on the poor boy's shoulder. Across the room against the wall was some short red head who at some point got a hold of Kubukuri Bocho and was cuddling it in her sleep with a light blush on her face. That would be something to explore for sure. Not far from her in the center of the floor was another duller red head, limbs spread everywhere and dressed in only a sports bra and biker shorts. Oh yes, this could be good. Little Naruto, builds a harem. The girls fight over the hierarchy, things get spicy, special weapons are involved. Giggling increasing, he missed Naruto replace himself with a clone so he wouldn't wake the girls. He didn't however miss the boy tackling him out the window. Both men ending up across the street. Naruto had his hands on his hips while he frowned at the older man. Gee pervy sage, nice to see you haven't changed. Chuckling and putting his book away the sage leaned down a bit, oh come on Naruto, even you gotta admit that was good material. The inspiration. Blushing the boy turned away, they better not end up in your books. I won't have to get to you, they'll tear you apart. Waving a carefree hand to dismiss the concern, Jiraiya took in the fact that Naruto was still upset and it likely had nothing to do with this morning. What's up shorty? Best to address it right away. He had been gone for a few days after all, and he probably had missed something important. You've been gone. Blunt and to the point Naruto was upset that just after Jiraiya learned about how shitty things had been, it felt like he had been abandoned by the elder ninja again. Sighing, Jiraiya sat on the ledge of the building they were on. 
pull up a seat kid, I've got some news for ya. Naruto did so, sitting on top of an air conditioning unit, funny, so do I. Pulling out a scroll, Jiraiya tossed it to Naruto. To make it simple, you're being hunted by an organization for that demon in your gut. I don't have concrete numbers yet, but all the members were black cloaks with red clouds. Naruto nodded, so Itachi, and that Kisame guy? Yeah, them, plus a whole host of others. They're all Kage-level nuke mean, and they're traveling all over the nations, hunting down demon containers. Pausing to watch the boy's face, he added some extra information as well, apparently Orochimaru used to be one of them as well. Somehow that's not shocking. Naruto took a deep steadying breath, before releasing it all at once. Cool, so even some crazy missing mean wanted him, just great. Anything else? Okage level ninja wanting to steal the demon from your guts and kill you isn't a big enough worry? Naruto leaned back, looking up into the color-changing sky as morning came, remember how I told you things weren't great here? How the council was screwing around with me? Jiraiya nodded, yeah, but Tsunade's back, so that should be settled soon, right? Naruto shook his head, nope. Council had already taken everything. Or at least the civilian side did. The ninja council had enough reasonable doubt to let them go through with it, at least that's what they said to me. Standing quickly, Jiraiya had to beat down his immediate reaction of wanting to hunt down the council and beat some answers out of them. There was a reason he knew he wouldn't be good as the Hokage. I'm guessing so as to not seem biased, Tsunade had to recuse herself. At Naruto's nod, the sage was still frowning, what else did they pull? Oh the usual, denied my promotion, warned I wouldn't get another chance at least for another year. Naruto's eyes narrowed dangerously, you know the normal treatment for the village demon. You aren't a demon. Cuffing the boy on the head, Jiraiya frowned in thought. They're taking advantage of you, because your clan is gone. If only you had more members. Suchan might work, but that's still only two, and that's only sorta. She's publicly a senju after all. More muttering and ideas, but Naruto raised a hand. I actually, um, there are more Uzumaki here. His master was in his face, before he could blink. You found more Uzumaki? How? Uh, godlike luck? Remind me to take you to a casino. Standing up straight, Jiraiya wasn't going to question who it was, remembering the two red heads in his apartment. That solves the clan act, restoration is another deal for later. But that makes you a council member. That also means reparations for wrongdoing against your clan. But you'll need at least two other clans to agree. Naruto crossed his arms as he thought it over, that Inazuka woman seemed nice enough. That's some loyal as they come. I believe it. Shikaku might as well, if we present the idea to him from a logical standpoint. Seeing Naruto's raised eyebrow, Jiraiya waved him off, Guy is a genius, has a kid on your little Yamanaka girlfriend's team. She's not my dash oh hush kid, the way she was clinging to you said enough. Jiraiya however, had a feeling something drastic was going to have to happen. Sure the civilian council had some say in economic matters, but it was still a stretch that they received enough ninja support to fully block a promotion. He was missing something. Oh, and that Danzo guy? Tried to give me a fake book laced with listening seals. There it was. The war hawk was up to his old games. Threats were in order. Okay kid, we've got some work to do. But we also have to have a talk soon about what we're going to do in the upcoming years. Those Akatsuki nutters are going to keep coming for you, and the village isn't enough of a deterrent to keep them away. Seeing Naruto want to protest, the sage held up a hand, we can talk about it later. For now, get back into a routine, and I'll catch up with you in a few days. Gotta run some things, by Tsuheim. Getting the boy to nod and agree, Jiraiya was off to the tower. He had information to give. Naruto himself turned back towards his apartment, hopping up and through his window. Smiling at the sight of his friends looking so comfy, his eyebrow twitched at his clone. Which had been creeping its hands to encircle both girls and was attempting to cop a feel. Do you really think that's smart? I'm you. What do you think? I'm not a pervert. Me being me says otherwise. Growling the real Naruto, switched himself with the clone while keeping his hands far away from sensitive areas. Clone giving him the finger, he dispelled it with a thought. He'd figure out why his clones were so defiant one day. His minor shifting however had managed to wake up Eno first, who pulled away slowly while rubbing her eyes, mmmmm, still sleepy. Uh, morning Enoheim. 
I suddenly wide open, the aforementioned girl looked around to confirm that yes she was just sleeping on Naruto, but also yes she was fully clothed. Reducing her panic, the girl wiped her chin of her drool. Uh, gee good morning Naruto Kuen. Sorry about the drool. Don't stress, you were asleep. Staying close to the boy, Eno's surprise began to morph into a teasing look. It's too early for whatever you're cooking. Sure thing whiskers, I'll just keep this blackmail to myself for a while. Standing slowly and stretching, she decided that sleeping on a couch was not the best for her body. The blonde considered her options for the day as she absently bent over at the waist. She missed Naruto's blush as her stretching did interesting things to her legs and backside. Next to him, Hinata began to stir, pressing herself into him and cluing him into the fact that she was also growing up very well. What is in the water around here? Inside his mind the QB snorted, and you call your teacher the pervert. I'm not a pervert fuzzball. Oh really, water trying to sandwich your arm right now? Hinata Himes T I no no no. I'm not a pervert. Says the pervert. Naruto missed Hinata finally waking and pulling away from him while rubbing her eyes. Still very groggy, the girl latched back onto Naruto's arm, M. I'm still dreaming. Five more minutes can't hurt. Naruto began to panic as Inoheim watched on from the sidelines. Yes, yes, five more minutes could hurt. Wake up Hinataheim. Hearing the others starting to stir as well, he looked pleadingly at Ino for salvation. Gazing as if upon an angel given flesh, his heart sank as the grin on her face grew even more. Don't worry pervert Zan, I'm sure they'll understand. This had to be the best wake up ever the girl decided. Traitor. No more Enoheim. He didn't want a beating this early in the morning. Scene change, grumbling as he finally reached the training grounds, he'd have to remember a panicked Hinata was a hard-hitting Hinata. Sealed sword back on his person and fully clothed, Naruto was actually looking forward to training. The girls he left in his apartment all asked if they could hang out while he was gone, which he had no problem with. Though he was worried just how much of a wreck his place would be by the end of the day. Taking a breath and seeing Sasuke ahead of him, he waved to the half-asleep boy, stay up late again emo boy. I'll murder you one day. Gotta be awake to do that. Not seeing Sakura around, Naruto decided to pass along the teasing. Wiggling his eyebrows he grinned, don't see Sakura, you finally give in and give her that date? Blushing, the boy looked away, it's not like that. Naruto finally came up to the boy and slugged him in the shoulder, sure sure, but you know. Sasuke sighed, actually, can we talk about this, seriously, later? Immediately caught off guard, Naruto nodded without hesitation, sure Sasuke, we can talk. Thanks, Baka. You're even starting to sound like her. Like who? Said Pinkette jumping into the training ground finally, both boys looked between her and then each other. Ja Kenpa for it? Uh, uh, you cheat. Cheaters should do it. You're the one who's predictable, not me. Being surprising all the time isn't really a good thing. Smacking both of the boys and walking away, the only girl of the team groaned loudly, I swear, I think you're both losing brain cells every day. Beginning to stretch and warm up, Sakura missed both boys' fist bump each other. Naruto had his hands behind his head, ah come on Sakura-chan, you love us. Like a bad rash. Snorting, the blonde ninja unsealed his sword so he could begin working through basic forms shown to him by Kakashi-sensei. Again, not a sword master, but someone who had picked up enough through their life to show him something. Beginning exercises while they waited, he noted that after finally removing those weight seals, the sword felt even lighter. That was a little terrifying, pretty sure he could throw it like Zabuza had when they first met. So what's the plan, wait on Kakashi-sensei? Sasuke himself was performing push-ups as a warm-up, though he was in a handstand and balancing on his fingers, yeah I guess. He's been pretty good about being on time recently. Sakura nodded from where she was stretching on the ground, laying flat on her chest while her legs were spread to either side of her, at this point, it's almost like he's been on time more than he's ever been late. We probably shouldn't jinx it. Naruto was swinging away, beginning to work up a light sweat. Mind still distracted by not only his family drama, and wasn't that a doozy to think about, but also the council fuckery again, he almost missed the appearance of his sensei's chakra. Shunshin complete, Kakashi was all smiles as he waved at his team, yo. Continuing his warm-up, Sasuke greeted their sensei first, morning sensei. Hey Kakashi sensei. Sakura bent and rolled to her feet out of her latest stretch, morning sensei. 
Seeing his team come to attention, with Naruto resealing his weapon, he got straight to the point. We won't have a mission today, we're in full intensive training for the next week. That made all of them slightly nervous, intensive training sensei? Sakura wanted to run. A focused Kakashi was not a nice Kakashi. That's right. You've all made it clear that you wish to be the top of the top as quickly as you can for your own reasons. So, I'm going to do my best to help. That he wanted to make sure they didn't end up like his old team was a different matter altogether. Uh, so what does that mean sensei? I smile at full strength, kunai were already in his hands, remember kiddos, full intent to kill. Screaming, all three genin would be pushed very hard for the next several hours. They all came to the consensus that Kakashi sensei had lost his mind. Half a village away in a top floor apartment, the Uzumaki girls were getting to know Hanada and Ino, and vice versa. Tayuya seemed to get along easily enough with the more outspoken Ino, while the shy types of Hanada and Karen melded together easily. It was however, as they were cleaning up the mess from last night that Ino asked probably the most important question of the day. So, you're going to be staying for a while, yeah? Karen nodded right away, yup. It's not like we have any set place to go in mind, and Naruto Kuen seems to really want to help us out. I'd feel bad if we didn't accept. Tayuya wanted to kick the smaller girl, but we do need to pack up eventually. Can't stay in one place for too long. Orochimaru wouldn't leave them alone. Both of them had used to him still. Ino shrugged, I mean. Now knowing you are all clan members, I get wanting to stick together. Plus the leaf is pretty safe. Hinata sighed, council interference notwithstanding. Ah uh, yeah, forgetting about the council. Karen was tying a trash bag closed as she looked over their handiwork. Naruto did suggest blowing them up at one point, didn't he? We can't blow up the council. Giving the civilians a seat at the table has helped Kanoha weather so many disasters over the years. Hinata remembered her own training in politics from her father, back when she was meant to be the heir. Yeah well, seems like this council has no love for the Uzumaki. Tayuya grouched as she and Ino brought another bag to be sat next to the front door. Karen did have to nod at that, true. I'm almost worried they'd try to marry us off and breed us like what the lightning ninja wanted to try with us. Tayuya shuddered at that, a real admission that brought forth unpleasant memories. Yeah, that was the worst. Like their ninja need any more of a power boost. Ino was watching them both with wide eyes, they would go so far to obtain Uzumaki blood? Tayuya scoffed as she and Ino walked back into the living room, you betcha. After the fall of Yuzushio, we've all been hunted down like dogs. It goes one of two ways. Either they want to kill us so we can't become a threat, or they want to capture us to breed us and make super ninja. Karen again thought of her mother, they use us and use us until there's nothing left. And then throw us away when we're done. Ino sighed, Kanoha's different though. Hinata was the one to step in before either of the foreigners could, is it though? The village has used and abused Naruto all this time. And when he's finally started to make a name for himself among the populace, they take his achievement away from him. Dropping back onto the couch with a grown Ino couldn't refute her friend, that's true. But the village is better than a lot of the other major villages. We have more freedom here than say, earth or lightning. Hinata dropped next to her friend, does that mean anything really? We're not as bad as other villages, but we're still kind of shitty. Tayuya threw them a bone, I mean, it'd still be great to grow up here than anywhere else. I at least don't have to worry about someone tying me up and selling me off to the highest bidder while I'm here. Karen shuddered, we're waking up to some pervert breathing on you. Having had a few close calls herself, the younger girl rubber her arms where goosebumps had grown. Hinata and Ino looked at each other, nodding as a silent conversation was held within the span of a breath. Ino was the one who turned to the others, well as long as you're here you're safe. You can hang with myself or Hinata when you want to go out and you know Whiskers will help you out whenever he's available. Whiskers? It's her name for Naruto Kuen. Ah, makes sense. Hey, what's with the whisker marks anyway? Someone cut up his face when he was a kid or are they weird birthmarks? Tayuya leaned forward with curiosity. They hadn't been told about the QB, only that they needed to bring back the Uzumaki boy. Um, something of a birthmark. Hinata knew that wasn't a secret for her to tell, so she kept her answer as easy to accept as possible. She was however, slightly put off about the casual mention of torturing children. What about his eyes? Did one have to get replaced? That scar is pretty gnarly. Karen had been interested in it but never had the chance to ask about it. 
Eno fielded this one, injury from his first major mission, got hurt and some poison apparently changed it. Bad reaction with his chakra. He says it doesn't hurt at all, but we catch him itching it from time to time. Again, something that involved the QB that they couldn't answer truthfully. At least Naruto had given sanitized answers before in the past that they could use now. At least until he considered these girls trustworthy enough to learn his secret. The rest of the day held the same sort of vibe for the four. With no missions and no reason to go back to her clan at the moment, Hinata was happy to stay and learn more about the Uzumaki pair. While Hinata noted Karen was much more open with them, Tayuya seemed very guarded and cagey. Obviously both girls had been through a lot in their lives, possible that Tayuya had been through much worse. For Naruto's sake however, she was willing to be welcoming. Ino was much of the same mind though she was worried about Naruto himself. She realized pretty quickly that Naruto was latching onto these two very quickly, possibly from an effort to control something of his family that couldn't be taken away. The council had unintentionally created a very dangerous situation. Ino felt a chill fall down her spine as she had a thought. If something happened to one of these girls, just what would Naruto be willing to do? Considering his talents, she didn't want to consider it too hard. Eventually, a clone of Naruto came back to the apartment, warning the girls he wouldn't be home so he could help out his teammate Sasuke. This was fine with Karen and Tayuya, as they were perfectly okay with being independent. Ino however pulled Hanada aside while telling the clone not to dispel just yet. What's wrong Ino-chan? Walking away from the other girls who were chatting with the clone, Ino was frowning as she pulled Hanada down the hall towards the front door. Coming to a stop Ino looked Hanada dead in the eye, listen. I can't stay, but is there any chance you can? Hanada nodded slowly, if I sent word to Karina sensei I would be fine. We do have a team meeting in the morning. Ino nodded, I can't stay, I need to get back home. Looking over her shoulder to make sure the girls were distracted, the blonde turned back to the Hyuga, I don't think we should leave them alone. Like at all. Seeing Hinata's questioning look Ino continued, the council has been rat-fucking Naruto as much as they can for years. And now we learn that apparently Uzumaki women are very much in high demand outside the village. Wanna take a guess what they might do if they learn that two Uzumaki women are here in the village unprotected? You, do you really think they would go so far? It's Naruto. They interfered with the Chunin promotion and stole his inheritance. Point. Hinata was thoughtful for a moment before nodding, sure, I can stay till tomorrow morning. Maybe we can work out a rotation until we figure something more permanent out. Ino nodded, sounds good. Turning back to Naruto's clone, she jogged over and grabbed it, careful not to exert enough pressure to break its shell, hey, can you pass a message back to your creator? A sure thing beautiful. What's up? Blushing Ino had to remember Naruto's clone were much more, liberal, than he was. Tell him to make sure Karen-chan and Tayuya-san always have a clone or two here with them. Just in case. Oh, yeah that's not a worry. But he'll know you were worried about them Enoheim. Anything else? Wondering what he meant about it not being a worry, Eno just nodded and accepted it, sure, that's all. Then I'm out. Peace. Dispelling in a cloud of smoke, Eno sighed at the clone's antics. Should we be concerned? Karen was watching them with an unreadable expression. Hinata shook her head, no. We just want to take your worry into consideration is all. Nothing crazy. That she knew just as much as Eno how power-hungry their village council was went without saying. She'd go along with helping these girls, for Naruto's sake. Scene change, Naruto wondered briefly how his life had come to this. When teams were made, he was sure he would never get along with Sasuke. Never mind, actually consider him something of a brother. But here they were, walking through the abandoned Uchiha district, while Sasuke talked about his long-gone family. It was a different feeling to hear him speak about them. His parents, his older brother before he apparently went off the deep end. His various cousins and extended family. They were all Uchiha, after all. Everyone that had lived here had been family to him at least a small amount. Coming up to the boys' home Naruto gave a respectful bow before crossing the threshold and following Sasuke inside. Sasuke however, just sighed, you know. Before I gained any respect for you, I just considered you a troublemaker and a burden. Naruto nodded, well, back then I wasn't much else. Plus I figured you were a complete prick and a bastard. My parents were married, thank you very much. Oh, so just a smartass then. 
both boys laughing, Sasuke led Naruto to the back porch, where the view included a small lake and a training field. Sitting and motioning for Naruto to do the same. Sasuke was deep in thought for a while. Now however, I respect you. You're my teammate. Someone who has fought and bled with me. Someone who has promised to help me get my revenge against my brother. Hell, you even tried, going after Itachi with no hesitation once you learned who he was. Turning to looked at the blue and purple-eyed boy, Sasuke bowed his head, thanks. For being a better brother than Itachi. Naruto chuckled, well thanks for accepting me for me, it's not like you had to after all. They sat in silence for a while. Just enjoying the view and ignoring their sore muscles and minor injuries. Kakashi-sensei had pushed them all very hard today and neither wanted to move once they had sat down. Leaning against a post for the roof, Naruto groaned, you said you wanted to talk about something serious. Was talking about your family it? Sasuke shook his head in the negative, leaning back himself and resting against a different support, no. I uh. Naruto had both Hinata and Ino sniffing after him. He had to have a better idea of dealing with girls than he himself did. Biting the kunai as it were, Sasuke just blurted it out. How a dot what should I do, on a date? Entire mental train derailing and falling into a ball of fire, Naruto had to take a moment to process that. Sasuke was asking him for dating advice? Him? Did he give off the impression he was dating anyone right now? A dot what do you mean? Sasuke sighed, I uh. I know we joke. But rebuilding my clan is on my list of things to do. Sakura-san is a major supporter of mine. Plus now that she's actually training and showing herself to be an actual decent person. What with her not ignoring you all the time in favor of fawning all over me. So uh. I want to give it a shot. And I figure. You're always on dates with Ino-san and Hinata-san. You should have some idea of what to do right. Wanting to deny all of it and tell his friend that no, he did not go on dates with his friends. He could see that this was in fact really bothering Sasuke. Sasuke deserved for Naruto to take this seriously. While Naruto didn't consider training, fighting, or lunches as dates, there was the fact that they were ninja. Kakashi-sensei had mentioned that they were more physical people at least once or twice. They learned more from exchanging fists than any civilian could while talking. Shrugging, he decided he could wing it. Well uh. I guess the first thing is to not get weird about it. Weird? Yeah. Don't think so hard about it being a date. Start small. Go to lunch with her, ask her stuff about her family. What she grew up like, things she's done outside of ninja life. Just, treat her like a really good friend you want to know more about. In return answer her questions honestly, don't hold so much in. Naruto shrugged finally, my go-to when talking doesn't get a point across is to go train and let M beat the snot out of me. Yeah, I think you've got some kinks to work out there buddy. Says you. Training gets a lot done. Still say you're broken. Oh, there's no argument there, trust me. Chuckling, Sasuke looked at the calm lake waters, do you dot do you think you might let Hinata-san or Ino-san in that much? I know you're not that dense Naruto. So would you follow through with your own plans to rebuild the Uzumaki? Naruto had to sit in silence for a while as he really considered that one. His new fear was that even if he somehow got that far with any of the women in his life, somehow the council would come in and ruin all of it. He was unsure of his life as long as they were alive. But if something happened to any of them? He knew exactly what he would do. I, I'm sure Hanataheim or Enoheim would be thrilled. I just, I'm worried about what the council would do. If they try anything, you have the full support of the Echiha. That's a promise. Naruto did really appreciate that, that's great, but reality is, we're both heads to clans that are broken and scattered. The council doesn't give a shit about us, except to use us. Sasuke nodded, but then paused, as the way Naruto said that hit him. What do you mean scattered? How do you know you're not the last Uzumaki? Oh uh. He hadn't meant to bring that up. Sasuke was supposed to be the focus here, not him. Yeah, no big deal, but I've run into a couple of Uzumaki recently. Don't worry, I confirmed that they are in fact Uzumaki clan members. But uh yeah, I have family in the village right now. Sasuke's eyes went wide, of course you wouldn't bring that up sooner. I thought we were done with secrets. I didn't mean to keep quiet about it. But you wanted to talk and I wanted to focus on you and dash dobe. Hey. Shut it. 
This is actual clan relations, their family. That's important. Yes I want to talk about dating Sakura, but we can do both you know. Chuckling, Naruto rubbed his neck, noted. Huffing the dark boy knew this would be a constant thing with Naruto, his mind was already bending towards this new information. How many? Two girls. You're a clan head then, as long as neither of them contest it. Thinking quickly now, he himself was building an idea in his head. That means you're eligible for a seat at the council. And that also means protections too. Protections? Yeah. An attack against you means a response from your clan allies and the village itself. That also means everything that's been stolen from you that can't be returned must be reimbursed by the clans or the village. It also means if we don't have a mission tomorrow, you and me might be making a trip to the Hokage Tower. Naruto raised a hand to interrupt the boy, actually, Pervy Sage is working on something already. Of course someone else knows. Do I want to know the story involving that? It's Pervy Sage being pervy. Ah, uh, so the usual. Back to silence for a moment, both boys just appreciated the time for a while. Sun beginning to set and travel towards the horizon, Naruto couldn't keep quiet. You know. Once you and Sakura start dating, think she'll finally chill out a bit? Doubt it, we've been riling her up for too long. She'll probably beat us within an inch of our lives, when she figures that out. Just you. I plan on tripping you, and running away. Do that, and I'm sending Hinataheim and Enoheim after you. Oh a real threat for once, I'm impressed. Both boys chuckling again, they eventually returned to silence and just watching the sky and the clouds. That they had given themselves this time to relax and bond was good. Next time they'd have to include Sakura. Bet your kids are all gonna be dark-haired with loud mouths and monster strength. Yours will probably all be pranksters with cubie-sized appetites. As long as they don't get the broody gene, I'm good. I don't brood that much anymore. At least you're self-aware enough to know you brood. I'm gonna toss you in the lake. You can try. I'll smack you around from here to snow. You and what army? Sasuke watched Naruto's eyebrow raise comically. Yeah, that sounded stupid the second it left my mouth. Groaning the last possibly sane member of the Echiha clan rolled to his feet, come on, I'll cook and we can crash. Oh food and sleep sound so good right now. Also, one word of this to Sakura, and I'll tell Hanada-san and Ino-san the truth as well. You think I'm dumb? Bro code man, bro code. Laughing, both boys set about making dinner together and eventually passing out for the night. It was good they decided that they could have this time. Maybe together they could change things in this village in the future. Time would tell. Across the village as the night wore on a quiet Tayuya and Karen were meeting on a secluded rooftop with another member of the Sound Four. Sakan had his arms crossed as he tapped his foot impatiently. What's taking so long? You've made contact with him, haven't you? Tayuya frowned, yeah, even staying with the squirt now. What's the problem? I thought we had time. Sakan shrugged, things change. If you can't convince him to come on his own, at least get knocked up and come back. That should be easy enough for you too. Karen grit her teeth, we were suppo dash Sakan glared at the younger girl, do not speak up. You're barely above an insect as it is. Turning back to Tayuya, Sakan held up four fingers, four days. If you can't complete your mission in four day, we're coming back to try it our way. Got it? Whatever you say shithead, we got this. Nodding, Sakan started jumping away along their secret route to avoid patrols. Left behind Tayuya was visibly shaking as Karen looked at her with worry. We thought we shouldn't do this. Shut up. We don't have a choice. We could stay. Don't start that again. We can't stay. This village will treat us just as bad. Tayuya was already turning away and preparing to jump back towards Naruto's apartment where they had left the Hyuga girl. Not in the village, but with Naruto Kuen. Naruto Kuen won't betray us. You know it, just as much as I do. Whiskers is a stupid dreamer, just like you. Karen pulled forward to stand in front of Tayuya arms spread wide and blocking her off, listen to yourself. You're even using that nickname for him too. Karen sighed, still unsure of just how loyal Tayuya was. With plans changing so quickly, she was willing to risk herself. I want to stay, dreamer or not, you know he'd protect us. Tayuya looked away with a frown, he'd try. Sighing heavily and closing her eyes, but eventually turned to look at the younger girl, you know what'll happen to us. 
to him. The second this village learns about us, we'll turn into their prisoners instead of Odo's. Are you ready for that? What if, what if we convince him to leave too? That goody goody? No way. I'm serious. So am I. Both girls stared each other down for a long while. Karen had no loyalty or love for Odo. First, Kusa had used and been responsible for her mother's death, then used her and thrown her away. Now Orochimaru was looking to do the same. No, she was done with the villages for a long while. Taiyuya however, knew she wasn't loyal at all, but scared. She had been a prisoner, had to fight for her place in the Sound 4, and even then, she wasn't close to the strongest at all. She had skill sure, but if they wanted to, the things any of the others could do to her made her shiver. Never mind now knowing they were fine with her just being a seed bed for Naruto's kids told her exactly what they really thought about her. Given a better option and assurance that she'd be safe, she'd leave Odo as well. We doubt we have four days. Karen nodded, we can figure something out in four days. Maybe a way to buy some time too. Tayuya frowned as she accepted the deal all the same. Hopefully this doesn't get us killed. I'd rather die than go back to Odo. Suit yourself, I want to live personally. That one point they couldn't agree on, both girls jumped away to take a roundabout route towards the apartment. Tucked away out of view, Hinata with her Byakugan active sighed and let the bloodline technique fade away. So that's what was up with the girls. Lip reading being one of the first skills she had picked up, Hinata thought things over as she left and took the more direct route to Naruto's, not having to worry about Umbu patrols herself. She'd first have to talk with Naruto, but a plan was forming in her mind. This was something that had a time limit after all. Omake, far across the border in the Land of Rain, a group was meeting to discuss a small bump in their plans. Everyone arranged along the fingers of the ghetto Mazo, it was Payne who started things up for the evening. Daydara, you called for this meeting, what is it about? Said Ninja was all grins, spreading his arms wide while his partner just sighed with irritation. Leader, please just ignore this idiot, he has so few brain cells left. Daydara scoffed, oh piss off, you just have no courage to ask for what rightfully needs to happen. Payne sighed, they didn't have time for things like this, and what, pray tell, needs to happen? Daydara again spread his arms wide, okay. So, we know the Nine Tails kid is in Kanoha, right? Getting some nods he continued, I think we should, instead of trying to pull the demon out of him, we should recruit him. You want to recruit the Nine Tails container? Payne almost couldn't believe his ears. Yes. He's a very gifted artist and a genius of his generation. It would be a shame to let that go to waste. Why not recruit him, turn him to our side and just, hold out on pulling the QB out of him until we actually need the weapon? Daydara looked around with a wide smile, he's gotta be last anyway right, what's the harm? Sasori spoke up again, other that you being a complete moron talking about your wasteful art. Take that back, you charlatan. Kakuzu sighed and almost turned to go, I can't believe we entertained this nonsense. I'm too old for this. Haydn shrugged, I hear the kid has a nice little bounty on him, could be fun to hunt down. He did blow a town-sized crater into the country. Daydara heard them however, touch him and I'll blow you to bits. Haydn wiggled a finger in an ear, sorry, I don't swing that way, no blowing me please. Coloring with rage, Daydara pointed a finger, that's not what I meant and you know it. Itachi sighed and he turned to Kisame, should we bring up the fact Naruto Kuen would never betray his village? Kisame shrugged and tapped his sword on his shoulder, I don't know, I kinda wanna cross swords with the kid. He may be a rank amateur, but give him a few years, and I might actually get a workout out of him. Sasori sighed and tried to cut off Daidara's ranting at Haydn, this is enough, isn't it? Why not let it go before I start telling secrets? Daidara paused, turning slowly like a broken puppet to start at the puppet man himself, you wouldn't. Pain himself finally exerted some chakra pressure on everyone, if we're quiet done? Next to him, Conan just sighed and shook her head. Uh, yeah leader, guess I'm done then. Unnoticed to Daidara, a picture was pulled from a pocket of his robe. Oh, thought you might want this back, Painsama Sasori, using a chakra thread, tossed the picture to their leader, which was caught by Conan. Looking down at the picture of herself, Conan was confused, why do you have a picture of me? Within the cave, there was silence. No one moved or even breathed. Daydara refused to meet the woman's gaze, I uh. Haydn however burst out in hysterics, oh man. Do you have a crush on Conan? Is that your spank material? 
Howling with laughter, the immortal missed the explosive hummingbird headed his way. No that's a... That's, I was gonna use it to convince the nine-tailed container to join us. Yeah, that's it. No one was buying it. But Nagato's pain was very much over all of this, of course. Kisame leaned over to whisper to Itachi, watching the chaos unfold as Daidara turned on Sasori with explosions. So, uh, wanna talk about your own little picture you think you hide very well? Itachi didn't move or react. Wanna talk about that picture of that redhead rebel Mizukage candidate back in your home village? Ah, uh, I'll keep my mouth shut. Good idea. After a moment of watching Daidara try to smash or blow apart Sasori and his puppets however, Kisame grinned, at least the rebel has some amazing knockers. Wouldn't mind drowning in those. Itachi sighed, Conan has a quiet refined beauty to her. You wouldn't understand, you brute. Just admit you like sticks to a full-sized tree. Bigger isn't always better. Yes, another well-worn argument that would take some time to work out through all of the chaos, 